westernized world.
Bartrand. Bartrandize the world.
right now is to just continue to grow this bond with this team, continue to grow the Hornets franchise in general, and continue to impact winning. Huh? He's looking to grow a brotherhood with that team. Right? That's what he's looking to do. Call them to dinners. Call them together. Getting to know them as men. I need to know who's with me. You know? I'm sure he's getting to know LaMelo. I'm sure of it. He's always in Brandon. He's always in Brandon Miller's ear. <laughs> I am sure he's in LaMelo's ear. Miles' ear. Miles talks him up every time. Every time Grant Williams, every time, every time Miles talk about Grant Williams, he talks him up. You know what I'm saying? And I am absolutely sure, without a doubt, that he's in the metal balls here. I'm sure that out of all the people he's looking to bond with, Grant knows that especially if he intends on having any long-term <laughs> stay here in Charlotte, he must bond with the franchise player and push him. And I'm sure he told LaMelo, hey, LaMelo, baby, if I push you, it ain't because I'm trying to show you up, man. It's because without you, we can't go nowhere. <laughs> we need you. So I'm gonna push you. I'm gonna push you, not because I'm trying to disrespect you, you know? I'm gonna push you because greatness is there with you. I know it's there. I've seen it. I played against you. You've cooked me a few times. You cooked me earlier this year. LaMelo cooked Grant earlier this year. <laughs> Go back and look at those LaMelo ball highlights. Especially in that second half. In the first half. A lot of those layups that LaMelo was hitting was on Grant Williams. <laughs> uh, that's why I talked about him at the end of the game. Grant was saying, Grant was shaking his head like, Phew. You know, LaMelo's a handful, you know what I'm saying? Especially when he get hot, you know, it's like, so that's why I posted that. I pinned that in my, um, I pinned that in my, um, in my tweet, in my, on my ex, I pinned that his response to that because it was the truth, right? So I'm sure Grant Williams is, 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 uh, making sure he can be a guy that LaMelo can lean on. You know what I'm saying? You know, he want to be gang gang with LaMelo. Trust me, he do. You know, and LaMelo is the type, yo, he can be gang gang. You know, I'm sure, you know, they're forming a bond and everything, you know? So, it is what it is. Bartrin. Bartrin. Bartrin the world. Mic check, mic check, <laughs> mic check, one, two, what is this? Peace, peace, peace. Uh, let's go to the chat right quick, man. Peace to you, Aunt Jams. Peace to you, Bizza. Peace to you, Rap God. Peace to everybody else who's in here. Let me see how many we got in here so far. Let me check on the chat just a little bit. Oh, shit, 10 in the building. Five like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me refresh it, make sure. 10 in the building. Ah oh, shit. Seven likes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shit. What? Hey. Hey, let's get this shit started right, goddammit. Let's get this shit started right. This is Chief Bartram. Bartronize the world. This is the BTW Network. This is Tribe Sports Media. This is the Tribe Buzz Show, live or video, huh? And today, we're going to cover some of the exit interviews I've been able to glean 
uh, Charlotte. I hate when they do this, man. The Hornets drip out. <laughs> the Hornets will drip the interviews out, right? So we may be doing some of this real time because I got. I'm on the Charlotte. I'm on the Hornets page right now. Let me refresh this right quick. Oh yes, okay. So they got. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna cover all of it. So everybody, just get ready to sit down. Today, you're just gonna sit down. I. I've been seeing bits and pieces of the exit interviews, right? All over X, people have been sending out snippets of it, right? So I I kind of like to, I like to wait for like for the full interview to come out so I can get more of the context. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't like people interpreting or giving, in, giving an interpretation of what they said and, you know, Rob Boone putting out his little snippets and everybody else putting out their snippets. I like to go through the interview myself, listen for myself, and then I decide what to take from it. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm happy that you all have come here to share in this with me, you know, as we as we react to the exit interviews. And as I see here, let me see. Let's go to the control room. We have, okay, we have four interviews. Let me see. We got Grant Williams. The Hornets posted Grant's interview. They posted Seth Curry. They posted Masich, they posted Miles, they posted Brandon Miller, they posted Mark Williams, they posted Lamelo Ball, and they posted Steve Clifford. We're gonna go through all of them, if y'all don't mind. Y'all let me know. We can run through all of them right now. We can run through all the interviews right now, and we can respond in real time to this, right? We can respond in real time to the interviews as they're getting out here, and then we can discuss kind of what we wanna see going forward and everything. Um and everything, but that's why y'all come over here, baby. This is the best to do it. I don't give a fuck what anybody else say in terms of Lamelo Ball content. And yes, I would dare say I will. I yes, I'm gonna say this in the spirit of Kendrick Lamar in the terms of Charlotte Hornet and Lamelo Ball content. You ain't gonna find it nowhere else. You're not gonna find it nowhere else. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. Not like this. You know, you got others that deal more analytical and all sorts of stuff. Over here, we talk shit. You're entertained. And also, you know, hopefully I can say some things that make people think up in here. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're sitting here. We're not, you know, we're not sitting. You're sitting on the couch over here at the BTW. You see what I'm saying? The couch is over there. Right? And okay. Casual. Damn. Salute, casual. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. My shit went down for a minute. Okay, here we go. Okay, if it's doing this right now, okay, we we're gonna we're gonna record. I'm gonna keep recording. YouTube is acting acting up now. That's either one or two reasons why that's doing that. Either because I haven't said anything. No, I haven't said anything controversial. Have I? No. You know, sometimes some of the um, some of the technically savvy haters of this channel sometimes they'll come by and play these little games. They will, you know, because this channel is 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 up over here, <laughs> you know. And if there's any thought that the BTW and and, and Chief Barton's channel was killed, I've kind of um eliminated any thought that you could kill this channel. Anyone could kill this channel. You know what I'm saying? Or else you're gonna have to put the work in if you want to get me. Get ready to put the work in, and not for five or ten minutes, not for one or two months. If you're gonna get bartering, you're gonna have to do this for life. Fucking with me, it is what it is. I've said it before. <laughs> you know, I've said it before already. You know, and after the after the wolves blew up the house, they found out that wasn't the easy. That was a that I, that I wasn't the easy kill. That's all there is to it. We were we are almost at the one year anniversary of this channel being independent since it went on this social media space. It was under the lit house for four years, but but for the past year it's been its own channel. Even though it was independent then, but it was still affiliated, right? You know, this channel is completely independent now. You know, I do my own thing. Did then, but when you're in a collaboration, you kind of want to form within the framework of a collaboration, you know, to work with people. You know, but that relationship has been over for about a year now. We're doing our thing over here, you know, yeah, and we we uh, we fell down briefly, but we're back. We've been back for a while, you know, and since then, two more channels have been opened up and those channels are growing. So, hey, we doing good over here. So let's see. Um, 
we're gonna do Lamelo's interview last, Rap God. I, I want to save his for last. Let me get my headphones close by because I'm gonna be listening in real time with y'all. Now, this is a live reaction because I've heard enough. I've seen bits and pieces of it, so I haven't heard any of the. Um, I haven't heard any of it, so we're gonna be reacting together, right? It's six, seven o'clock where some are. Hey, hey, it's gonna. This is gonna. I'm just letting y'all know. This may be about a two hour live because <laughs> half the lives are gonna be the interviews and we're gonna be talking the other part of it. So if y'all can hang with me, I'm gonna. We gonna keep it on here for a while. Peace, Mo. Mo, peace, 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 peace. You know, so we're going to run through all the exit interviews. But before we do this, I want to address something that, that has come out already. Before we get into the interviews. Word that LaMelo Ball needs to be pushed. You know, and I saw some of the dialogue on X about that. Kind of implying that LaMelo is unserious because he needs to be pushed. You know, and to me, that's a very unfortunate narrative to put out there, right? Because <laughs> this mythological thing, sometimes it's good to have people there who push you. Because Grant said some interesting, I saw a very interesting snippet that Grant Williams said, right? You know, as, as far as how and why and what is going on with pushing the metal ball. You know, the one thing I can tell everybody, barring anything crazy, you're going to get this same team next year. Depending on what, uh, unless Jeff decides to make a move, like if Jeff makes a splashy move or something like that, the foundation for the Hornets is set. And I don't see a situation where Miles Bridges is going to be gone. Although it could happen, the more I hear Miles talk, and we're going to hear today from Miles on this interview in real time. I I don't see a scenario where Miles is going away. Grant has Grant has mentioned two times where Miles Bridges fits on this team going forward. Grant has said it twice. I saw a snippet of it on X. He did it in another interview prior. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I don't see a situation. I don't see what I don't see. I don't see a situation where Miles is gone. You know, and everything. I I don't see that at all. I think he's in the I think he's in the fold. I think he's gonna remain in the fold. You know, um, again, we 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 you know some of you all may not have seen the interviews. So if you've seen the interviews before, just bear with me. You know, but some of us who have not seen the interviews, this will be our first time watching the interviews together. So we're gonna start. Let me see. I might skip some of them. Let me see. There's some of these interviews I might skip now. Let me see. We're going to do Grant, Seth, you know, Miles, Brandon, Mark Williams, LaMelo Ball, Steve Clifford. That might be it. I might just, we might, we're going to do the exit interviews. Let me see. Let me see Grant. Let me see LaMelo, Brandon, Miles. Yeah. You know, for, for the, for the, for the, for the Charlotte paper, we'll do uh, Seth Curry. Vasa Misich, do y'all really want to hear what Vasa got to say? Let's be honest, man. You know, let's be honest. Let's let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it a hundred percent, man. See what I'm saying? I know y'all want to hear what Seth Curry got to say. He's he's in the hometown, but do y'all really want to hear Voss? Let me know. Let me know. Jay, peace, peace. Do y'all want to hear? Oh shit! I don't know. <laughs> I almost flashed the fish for. <laughs> I'm not no GD. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Sorry about that. Shit. Um. Do y'all want to hear Vasa Masisha's interview? Do y'all want to hear Vasa? Somebody say yes or no. Because I'm really not trying to, I, I want to go through all the interviews, but Vasa may not even be back next year. You, you Do y'all do y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all understand why it's like, eh, do I really want to play Vasa? Vasa Masisha may not even be back next year. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, you know, and I'm not saying this to be disrespectful towards Vasa. But he might not be back next year. So it's like, whatever he's saying right now, I mean, does it hold any weight in the org? The way Grant Williams and Miles and Brandon Miller and Mark Williams and, of course, LaMelo and Grant and Seth, because of, because of the Curry family history there in Charlotte, of course, Seth holds weight. You know, I would not would be no fool to say that Seth Curry don't hold weight. He does shit. You know what I'm saying? So... 
Let me see something right quick. Let me go back here. We about to get to the... Oh, so... I said, as you all heard the receipts, you... And Jams, you don't want to... Ha, ha, what you say, Aunt Jams, going to get another kibasa? Ah, ha, ha, Yeah, I, yeah, I feel it. Forget the seats. Ha, 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 I said, nah, fuck the seats, God damn it. He ain't the main, he ain't the main thing on the stage. You know what I'm saying? Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is why I fuck with y'all, boy. I, I guess I can, I don't know if I can feel y'all's energy, but I was saying, do we want to really want to talk about the seats? Do we really want to hear what he got to say? Now, there are some Serbians who have come through the BTW. Don't feel a, don't feel a kind of way, Serbians. You know, my Serbian friends who come through here. I know a few of you come through here, especially since Poku and, and Vata come through. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, you know, it is what it is, my Serbian friends. You know, we, we're not there yet. <laughs> We got to prioritize some shit, man. Shit, you know, because I have a feeling that we gonna have a lot to say as we listen to these interviews, right? Let me see. Let me let me go to the chat right quick before we start the first clip. So we're gonna okay. So this is what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna get Steve Clifford out the way first, because this will be the last time we hear from Steve Clifford. We're gonna get Steve. I want I want to hear what Steve Clifford got to say because he is going. He's moving to the front office, right? So his voice still carries weight. Seth Curry has messed up being a producer for Steph Curry has messed up being a producer for that disgusting new Good Times cartoon. All right, man, I passed by that shit, man. As soon as I saw it, <laughs> you know, it ain't gonna be on long. Netflix gonna yank that shit. I ain't worried about it. You know, I was those. Yeah, you know, Steph Curry is well. You know what? That's that's an unfiltered bonfire conversation. Speaking of which, Charlotte Faithful. I did do my, uh, finally, it was, it's late, I know, hopefully it's not too dated. I uploaded my J. Cole response, finally, because <laughs> I know people have been waiting on me to respond, because I am a hip-hop head. J. Cole is up, it's on, uh, it's on the Box Nines Music channel, go check it out. You know, I kind of talked about J. Cole, I put a little snippet of it in this channel for people to watch, and if and, and for uh, for people to kind of get the energy of where I'm going with it, you know, so my, um, uh, so the response to J. Cole's response to Kendrick Lamar's uh so-called beef has been put up it's a vegan beef everybody you know but that's another thing you know i go live on my other channel talk about that um you know but that's up uh, you know on the bt so if y'all have not subscribed to the bt uh, to the unfiltered bonfire or about your nice music channel go and subscribe to those channels as well because i'm active on all my channels now i'm active on all my channels you know what i'm saying not just this one this is my sports channel but i got the um uh the music and entertainment channel and i also got my current events aboriginal channel you know because this is the aboriginal platform you know it is what it is this is a niji platform it is what it is you know what i'm saying you know we we we're indigenous we're indigenous ten toes indigenous here with the bows and the arrows here that's what it is you know what i'm saying um let's see so let's see yeah we ain't gonna do message message is out if any all the main guys are already posted so really there's no one else really to, to post, you know. You know, we'll do Seth. In fact, we'll probably do Seth Curry first after um, Steve Clifford. Let me go to Steve right now. We're going to go to the BTW board. Let's see. Bye. Let me see. Make sure we can get to it. Hello. There we go. There we go. There we go. There was bro, there was Steve Clifford right there. There he is. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Let's uh, blow it up. Oh, no. Shit, I can't blow it up, man. Shit, I can't see. Hold on. We just kind of have to leave it like this, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Y'all okay with it? I got all the other stuff for y'all to bookmark set up. Okay. Y'all okay with it, hopefully. Okay. So, we're going to listen to we're gonna listen to Steve Clip at first. And Jams. That 150 crowd and try to love Steph Curry more than those in the black community. Steph is doing too much tap dancing in the past years. To throwing out the community under the bus, yeah, but hey, he's a part. He's he's a part of the history of Charlotte, and you know he comes with it. Him, I mean, cold, cold, and <laughs> you know what? Let me not let me not go there right now, man. I'm disappointed in J Cole. No, wait, oh, actually, you know, no, I'm not because I don't, re I don't really fuck with J Cole. I mean, I have to be, you know, hey, J Cole, I, you know, I just hadn't really J Cole. I haven't been able to get into his music, so I'm about to cut my microphone off we're gonna listen to steve clifford and then we're gonna respond to what he said all right you know jump in the chat 
you know, uh, if you all hear something you, that you, you know, want to comment on, don't wait. Y'all can start the discussion. I'll jump in. All right. So let's go here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. Uh, about, you know, the end of the season, it takes some time to kind of process everything, and I know it's only been less than a day since that last game, but what have kind of been your emotions and feelings about not only the season coming to an end, but also uh, any time that have been in the last 18 hours or so? Well, I, you know, the, the one thing, uh, you know, when I left Orlando, uh, you know, I did the consulting thing in Brooklyn, uh, and I thought I was ready to kind of move on, you know, this next phase of, of whatever was going to be there for me. I knew I wanted to be in the NBA because I love it, but I thought I'd be good with not being a head coach. And as much as I enjoyed the consulting thing in Brooklyn, you know, I definitely realized, like, I wanted one more opportunity. So when this happened, as well as it was, I was excited, one, because I needed that, you know, just – you know, my basketball fix or whatever, I miss being in charge. Um, but also because it was here, you know, and it was with Michael, you know, with Mitch, who I'd worked for. Um, and in a place where, as you guys know, especially when I was here the time before, I felt like we were knocking on the door, you know. And you got to remember now, my first experiences were whatever, what, 20 plus years ago, where played out in the old arena and these fans were unbelievable you know I remember I think we were we were playing Toronto in the first round of the series Charlotte swept Miami back when it was three out of five Baron Davis David Wesley Mashburn those guys and you know I saw up close and personal what this place could be like with a winning team um, and then you know before um, you know, the series that we lost to Miami in seven, you know, the, 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 the three home games here were, I would say the home court advantage for us was almost as good as it gets in this league, you know. So part of the thing for me is, has always been to be part of that, you know, to, to be a team, as Michael's always said, and then Rick and Gabe uh, will do the same thing, where the goal is to, to build a roster where there can be sustained playoff success where we're a factor, where we're more relevant. Uh, um, and, you know, I thought that we could do that. Now, you know, it hasn't played out that way. And yet, as I sit here, uh, um, and part of it is in these last two weeks, doing the Boston prep and doing the Dallas prep, both games where more of our guys played. You know, Mello played both those games. Mark played both those games. And if you sit and watch those games, you can't help but feel good about where the roster is at. Um, and the new ownership to me, uh, uh, I think that their vision of what this can become is right on. I think the way that they'll handle things, the way they'll organize things, uh, they, they have a great understanding of how they want to do it. And, and I think Jeff will be great here. So there's so much to look forward to. But the biggest disappointment for me, frankly, is just you know, these two years, I don't want to make excuses, but, you know, we just never, you know, had continuity enough to to really build a game. You know, people can say whatever you want. It's a, I know when you watch games, it's always about chemistry, and it's it's not it. It's not it. You've got to have a way to play. And chemistry comes into that. But it starts with having enough talent on the floor, and this league has changed now. It used to be eight, nine guys. Now you need 11, 12 guys. But you've got to have a way to play. With each group, each year that changes, that makes sense in the league. What, how you win now is balanced play. It's always been that way. You want to go all the way back, go ever since I've been in the league. It's, you're not going to just outscore people in the playoffs, and you're not going to win 92-91. You've got to be good on offense. You've got to be good on defense. And I think that this group is built that way. Um, I think the drafting of Brandon Miller – is huge because he'll be good at all of it, in my opinion. Uh, but I do think that it's an exciting time, uh, and that I'm looking forward to be part of that. You know, in a in a different role that, you know, I just think for where I am in my life is more fits me. There's two things you mentioned just about um, Mark and Lamelo. Those two guys watching, I guess, game prep and just seeing what they were like with the Just from your perspective, two years you've been here, just how. 
so far? Well, I mean, I think that if you look at it, um, well, let's put it this way. The off season is always about progress and it's internal progress and then it's the external progress. So the internal progress is what they do on the floor, bodies, you know, guys that get stronger, more fit. Um, and I will say all of our guys, I would say looking at where they are right now, even the guys that have been injured, I think it's – I would be confident that they'll all be ready for training camp. You know, they're all doing more now, um, which is a big sign because you want to go into the off season where they're working on their conditioning, strength, games versus rehab. And so I think all of those guys will be ready, which is an important, important factor for next year. And then the next one is just, it's, it's the external. That's the draft, um, you know, whatever, free agency, trades, whatever it is. And if you look year to year, there's never one way a team is built. It changes, you know, like for our team this year, like if those guys were healthy and we were playing, getting ready to play next weekend to say a fifth seed, which maybe we could have, one of the biggest things last summer was Brandon Miller's draft, you know, because he's obviously – listen, I was excited about him last year, and he's a better player already than I thought he could be. Um, so you don't know, but it could be a trade. You know, some, listen, the last time, you guys might remember, we went from being a non-playoff team to a team that won 48 games uh, because we went from – 27th in three-point shooting to like six. So what were the factors in that? We got Nick Batum. We got Jeremy Lin playing for minimum, okay, who had the best year of his career. But we hired Bruce Kreitzer. And Marvin uh, Williams worked with him all summer, shot like 39 the next year. And Kemba Walker went from 32-5 to 38. So that's how we did it. It was both internally and externally. And Sometimes there will be moves for every team this summer that won't be the biggest free agent signing or whatever. When Jeremy Lin signed here, nobody was going crazy, okay? And he changed that team because he could play the two with Kemba and he could play the point when Kemba wasn't in there. And it gave us a group of nine of, just to be honest, veteran, intelligent, tough as hell team. You know, it's just, you know, I mean, we had so many free agents we couldn't keep them all, you know. But so you're not going to know. But that's what the off season is for. I mean, I think you mentioned Gabe and Rick their vision being uh, around for a year. So what do you see from those two guys to try to move the franchise forward? Here? Um. Well, I think that as they said, I th I think that they view Charlotte as a place where players will want to come, which I agree with. Every all the players that come here love it. I've never been around a player so far that didn't like living here. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but this is an easy place uh, to me to bring pro players to and have them want to stay here. Uh, I think that they will be maniacal about roster, uh, study, improvement, daily, being on top of it. Um, and I think that they'll spend a lot of time, obviously working with Jeff, on – what wins in the NBA, the study part. Uh, and then, you know, like, you know, roster versatility, you know, having freedom, flexibility is a better word, so that, uh, you know, you have a chance to, you know, constantly make moves. But if you sit and talk to them, uh, listen, they're just highly successful, very bright men uh, that have a passion for the NBA. And... Uh, you know, I mean, success usually comes down to personal qualities and spend time with them. You just get the feeling that they're going to figure this out. Steve, as you transition into this next role with the organization, how much input do you, will you have with the next coach and what kind of coach do you feel with this? Yeah, I think all that stuff is like to be determined, you know, like really we haven't talked a whole lot about it other than um, – you know, I'm going to take a few days off here and then, uh, you know, next week. And, and then my role will be, you know, whatever to be determined, you know, by, by Rick, by Gabe, by Jeff. Um, and so I think may, some of that may depend on who the coach is, you know, um, if I know him or not. Uh, 
or what they want. You know, the different coaches want to set up their staff different ways. The one thing I would be, and, and they know I feel this way, is is you got to let the head coach have the say on how he wants to do things. You know, so like what I want to be is I want to be a plus for the organization. I want to do things in a way, regardless of what it is, that um, might just be study. You know, it might be just, you know, whatever. You know, figuring out why some teams pick and roll defense is better than the other teams or whatever it is. But um, I want to be more of a resource, but I want to do it in a way uh, that I'm only a positive. You know, I was an assistant for a long time. And the one thing I learned is this, if they gave you three things to do, do those three things as well as you can. And when you do think you're good at them, do it better. Don't worry about doing his job, his job, and his job. And I tell my staff that all the time. If everybody does what they're told, that's how you function well, okay? This league is hard enough. You need everybody pulling in the same direction. And when guys are given chore, chores, duties, okay, responsibilities, and they try to knock them out of the park, that's when you have an effective staff. So, you know, what I want to be is high work and, you know, no maintenance. You know, just I want them to view me as somebody like, you know, we're lucky he's here. Um, but I'm not in a position where I'm going to be trying to hit home runs here. Steve, as you look at this roster and how it's beat up right now, and have hands-on experience with it, what, what, where does this team need to improve specifically? What position the player is? Yeah, I mean, you know what's hard for me on that is, you know, like, so the team that, even for this year, the team that you'd want to study to make, you know, like real without guessing, uh, things on, you know, these guys played 14 minutes together this year. We had 14 minutes in Orlando where they were all healthy. That's it. And Mello went down early in the second quarter. So, you know, obviously this is a team game with flow, right? So much, so much of it is just, you know, it's talent, number one, but it's how guys fit together. And the guy who, to take a big step, obviously, the guy who plays in a manner where he can make everybody fit together easy, he didn't play, and that's Mello. I mean, you watch Mello against Boston, he was 36, uh, I want to say maybe like 10 assists, 9 rebounds, or 9 assists, 8 rebounds against Boston, okay? And uh, Mark was like, I think in that game, like 16 and 14, okay? You watch the Dallas game, and that's when Mello still, remember now, Mello was not even cleared to play 5-1-5 five five until camp started. So those first few games, I think Dallas was maybe game seven or six or eight. And, you know, he still wasn't in shape. And yet, in the first three quarters, because that's what we had gotten to, he was only trying to get everybody else involved. And then he took over in the fourth. And that was his first really good game of the year. So I think it's really hard to evaluate. I will say this, offensively, and this was without Miles, you know, who's obviously – you know, a talented, talented player. You know, after 10 games playing without Miles, you know, we're ninth in offense. And that's Melo not in shape. Mark Williams was not, 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 not their own fault, but just because they just got cleared, Mark was the same. So we were, uh, we already had injuries. Terry missed three of those games, I believe. But you can see the offensive part. And, you know, I've told Jeff this, and I'll share it with Rick and Gabe too. You know, the hard thing for me is this, because this is my responsibility, although there are a lot of factors. Whoever we hire as the coach, I can't say to them, pick and roll coverage with Mark Williams, this is what you need to do. Because we didn't do it for a long enough period to say it's going to work. You know, you guys know, look, I'm aggressive, always have been with pick and rolls and stuff. Like, I think you can't sit back and – you know, let teams just run their offense in the NBA anymore. It's a lot different, right? Other people aren't. Um, now, it always worked before when I was here before, and that was with Al, with Cody. I mean, we went to Orlando where their pick and roll defense hadn't been good. We were blitz happy with Vucevic, and they didn't think it would work, and we were top 10 defense there. So I do think some of it can work, but I would tell a new coach, I would start from scratch. I'd be careful how much of the film I watch that way. Um, and find the best way for Mark Williams or whoever 
uh, to do everything because, again, we had stretches in defense these last couple of years were good, 10 games here, 18 games there, but never sustained it. And that, too, that's what this league is all about. It's having the talent, but then you've got to have the right plan for that group. Um, and I'm not running away from the question, but I, I don't think it's fair with all the injuries we've had. Shit, they weren't on the floor enough together for me to really say this, you know, the only thing is they didn't play well together. You know, they didn't play enough minutes together. I know the level stuff was very much out of your control, Steve. Um, but I guess how frustrating was it? it seemed like from the outside looking in, a lot of stop, start, stop, start. Um, I know it was a lot of it was out of your control, but how frustrating was that, that part of it? Oh, it's, yeah, it's difficult. You know, um, and he wants to play. He Listen, Melo's great. I mean, I think that uh, he is he has an elite talent. Like at his size, his shot creation, shot making, uh, and desire to win, you know, is exceptional. I, the, the desire to win piece I don't think people have seen yet around the league like they will, hopefully, as he plays in bigger games. He's extremely coachable. You know, the one thing I feel comfortable with is for him, his pick and roll offense has limited games improved tremendously in two years. Um, his finishing at the rim, decision making in the paint, he gotten a lot, lot better at. Um, and his defense is a lot better. Um, so I think that, I, you know, nothing has changed other than he's got to get healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, but I mean, he, in my mind, he can be a top player or second best player on a great team. And secondly, for me, of something that would be in your control, if there's something that was in your control over the last two years you can go back and change, what would it be? Yeah, I would say probably, you know, messing around with the five man pick and roll coverages more, especially when Mark played. Um, because I think one of his strengths, Mark, uh, is he's super smart and he's very agile for a big man. So you, if you want to go two years ago, I think we had a 20 game stretch where we were like second in defense. And again, we were super aggressive with him. He was out on the floor, double teaming, rotating, um, guarding smaller guys. Uh, and yet, like looking back on it, you know, I'm not sure if you don't spend more time where you do the Brooke Lopez, you know, and just stick him right down closer to the basket and see what happens, you know, and just say because his rim protection numbers are very good. You know, like he, he, uh, his instincts, uh, his reaction time for a man his size are exceptional. And obviously when you take him away from the basket, like what we did, um, you know, one, fatigues him, you know, and two, he's away from the basket. So there's there's good and bad. The one thing I do know going forward, he's really smart and he can remember all of it. So you can function well using him different ways. But for sure this year, um, that's one of the things that, that I would look at again. Coach, in two games a season, can you talk about the two iterations of this team pre and post trade that might be yeah, um, well, I think there's almost three parts of it because I think it's, you know, before, where, you know, the injuries decimated us, you know, before we made the trades. I think when, once we made the trades, um, we had a totally different feel in the locker room. Um, you know, we were older, more veteran, you know, guys like, they, like a guy like Seth Curry is just, in my opinion, invaluable to have around a team. And I knew that because, you know, he was in Brooklyn when I was there. And he's still a very good player, um, but he's a phenomenal teammate. And he's a phenomenal role model. Uh, DB is similar to that. Bertans, those guys have been around. They've played on really good teams. And they brought something to the locker room that was good for the, for the younger players uh, that way. And then, so with that group, you know, we were actually started off where we were pretty balanced, but our defense was great. Uh, 
and the other piece was Cody was back, you know. So once Cody, the game in Philly where Cody and Seth both went down, then, you know, we're just – we go from being a, you know, a decent talent defensively to, you know, it's a struggle, you know, just to guard the ball. You're taking away – Cody Martin – was playing defensively at a level, I mean, he would, you know, whatever. If you play like that for 82 games, he'd be in the conversation for all defense if he was that dominant. And Seth Curry is a very good team defender. And when we lost those guys, you know, our defense was, it was hard. So I think there's really three parts to it. Um, I will say this, I was uh, proud. The one thing I will say, we didn't establish offense. We didn't establish defense. They know how to practice. Guys know how to work. Um, they understand purpose of play. Um, they're very receptive to being coached. And it starts with the best play. You can coach Mello. People ask me all the time, other coaches. You can say, looks in. I've said stuff to Mello. He didn't care. You know, he likes it. He'll all say, like, that's the only way I'm going to get better. You can coach Miles. You can coach Brandon Miller. You can say stuff to Mark Williams. Like they're young and they want to get better, so those are those are all uh, I think characteristics in our league that are hard to come by that are really important. There's a couple questions for me. One, first one, quickly: Have you been a part of the coaching interview process at all? Is that something that you'd like to do? Yeah, just a little bit. Just with discussions a little bit with Jeff about do you know this guy or that guy? And I think again, when I'm going to come back next Monday, and we're going to sit down and talk about it and. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm up for any of, to be honest, like I, uh, like the question about working with the next head coach, if they want that, I mean, I, you know, obviously that's something I'm interested. In. I'm also interested though in learning about the draft and how they organize the draft or what they do to prepare for free agency. Um, because I've never really been that much into personnel. And so that part of it, I'm looking forward to also. So if it's, Working a lot with a new coach, um, that'd be great. Um, but I am selfishly, you know, I do want to learn. Like, you know, Jeff, Ryan, those guys are in Brooklyn. And they were, like Sean Marks and those guys, they're on it. They are super organized. Um, so I would like to, you know, be in those meetings like I've told them so I can learn from them. That was my next question. You mentioned that too in your stepping down press conference. Is that what you anticipate hitting once you come back from a break? And if so, evaluate the draft. Are you going to continue to be a film junkie? Do you want to scout and travel more? How do you see yourself being involved in the draft? Yeah, I would say more probably because I'll be a novice. Like, probably sitting here and just watching film would make more sense instead of spending money so I'm not bumbling around showing up late for games and stuff, you know? Um, <laughs> This part I can do for sure. You know, that part, it probably needs somebody with a little more experience, you know. Steve, over the last two seasons, what's something that sticks out to you as a high point or maybe something to be particularly proud of? Uh, you know, I think last year we went 18 games where we were like second in defense. And it really started with Mark Williams when he – you know, we weren't playing him much early, right? He was in the G League. And then right after the trade deadline, when he and Nick were playing, uh, and it really changed our team, you know, at the defensive end. And he was dominant. I mean, he did all of it. I mean, we, you know, you guys may remember, you know, we're plus one here. We get a switch. He blocks Trey Young's shot. I mean, it was just a great, great play that not many guys his size would be able to make. Uh, so I think that we've had a number, you know, of like really good, you know, like this year, you know, um, Mello likes to talk about when he stripped Halliburton. I'd call that a missed dribble from a great player, but he has a, he has a different view. And I think they're getting ready to kick me out here. Um, but, you know, you know, winning in Milwaukee last year, winning in Sacramento, we, we had a bunch of good wins this year against good teams, Boston here. Uh, the game last year uh, when we beat Dallas here, you know, was a good win. So, you know, there, there, there's th – again, for me, though, it's we don't have a way to play. You've got to have a way to play. You've got to 
there's got to be a way that when the game starts every night, they all know if we do this on offense, if we do this on defense, if we do this rebounding, we're good. And that's my discipline because that's what I've always been able to do. You go back to Kemba and those guys, they would say it. You know what I mean? Like, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And that's changes from team to team because that's where you're getting to what wins in the league, but what the strength of your roster is. And that's how the guys were in Orlando, Vucevic and those guys. Like, once they figured out if we do these things, we're going to win, that's when you got a chance. What do you feel like is the must do for the agency move internally? Yeah, well, I would say that that's this next month to me. I mean, I, again, I don't want to beg out on the question, but I haven't been thinking like that at all. But I think that as you as you go from uh, the end of the season right now, it's for the guys, what are their plans, what are their priorities for the summer, and then also for the, for the organization. Good. Thank you. Thank you. It was long, but important. I think it was really, really, really important what we heard Steve Clifford say, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, he said a lot of things, man. So let me go to the chat. What did y'all get out of that interview? We're going to be doing, uh, so peace, Dex, peace, and, you know, and I, yeah, I said peace already. Uh, my Karina, peace, RO, peace, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think I said peace to you, Mo. I hope I did. If not, yeah, peace to you, Mo. So we're running through the interviews. This is the first one. Uh, it was the longest one. So I said we're going to do the longest one first. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Sorry about that. That's a double. I'm sorry, everybody. I forgot to cut off the other audio. It'll, it'll double up, you know. So wait a minute. Let me, hey, let's, let's say, let's take a look. Where we, where we at? Where we at, baby? Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Where we at? Where we at? On the lights, God damn it. Let me see here. Because we ain't getting this nowhere else. Let me see. What lights we got up in here? How many people we got in here? Let me refresh this just to be sure. All right, let's go down. 12 likes, 16. Okay, let's get the likes to 15. Let's get, let's feed the algorithm. So what y'all think so far? Talk to me. What y'all think so far? Um. Uh, let me see. Let me go up. Let, let's go up and run down right quick. You know, um, because we left off on, on F-150 Cliff. Yeah. So Bizza says that Cliff is going to enjoy the front office role. I agree with that. I think that at his station in life, man, I think it's perfect. He can get to do. And obviously, he <laughs> very politely, Cliff basically said he don't really want to fuck around with the coaching part of it no more. Right. I think Clifford, he wants to deal more in the draft. Clifford want to, well, you know what he want to do? He want to watch film. He want to sit and watch film and break the film down, right? And pass it on to Jeff. And then Jeff will filter some of that down to the coaches. However, 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 I do, I find it interesting that he said that because I took notes while I was, I heard this is my first time hearing the interview, everybody. So we're doing this like real time together, right? So, when he said that it is important that the coach has his say, I've seen a lot of names come up as far as who be the next head coach for the uh, for the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Charles Lee kind of being the prominent name, but other names like Quinn and other names are coming up. Even talks of Mike Budenholzer coming, you know. So we hear a word of Jerry Stackhouse being interviewed with all that stuff. Don State, no, well, not Don, but um. The sister, the, oh, I forget her name, the, the one of the sisters being interviewed, you know. So I believe this is what I think. The it won't be it won't go like it went last time. Had they had this process in place a couple of years ago, Steve Clifford may not have been coaching. Because the stumbling block for Kenny Atkinson was the fact that he did not, they Mitch and Jordan did not let Kenny Atkinson have his say on who he wanted to be on his staff. So obviously Steve Clifford is kind of putting cautionary tale to the wind to Rick, Gabe, and Jeff 
basically whoever you hire, because this is a different NBA than it was back then. That those who, if whatever head coach you hire, unless they go for like a lower level type situation or maybe a first time coach. But if you're going to get like a Mike Budenholzer, if you're going to get him, he's going to want his own people. Budenholzer has been around enough to, to be able to know who to collect for the system he want to put in place for the team that Jeff now will give to him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, so I found that to be very, very, very interesting that Steve Clifford said that the coach let the coach have his say. What this means is that, like I said, Tyrone Corbin and the other coaches there, including Patrick Ewing, they all may be up out of here. Steve Clifford is in the house. He ain't going nowhere. They just moved him over. You know, they just moved Cliff over. They have not fired him. They've moved him. It's different. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. It wasn't an outright firing. They moved him over because they want to keep him in as a resource for that team. And away, tucked away somewhere in another room, Steve Clifford would be perfect because he can do this and they can say yes or no. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have no authority over anything. He can come and say what he found out and then people can say, okay, I like that. Or Go back to the room, Clifford. You know, they can do that with him. You know what I'm saying? So, and Clifford's okay with it. That's why he's talking about, they talking about, are you going to be traveling? Clifford's like, man, I can be traveling, doing all that shit. Man, look at me. Do I look like, do I look like I'm up to be traveling and doing the shit Mitch was doing all in Barcelona and all that shit? Steve Clifford ain't going to be traveling nowhere. His ass is going to have a nice little cubicle in the Spectrum Center somewhere. Right? If Clifford has something to say, he would remote in. Like if the team's on the road, and Jeff is having a meeting, they will remote Steve Clifford in to the motherfucker. Steve ain't going to be traveling all over the place. Man, stop. He's tired. I mean, I'm not saying that. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not saying this to be disrespectful to anyone who is older, right? But Steve just want a cubicle where he can just watch film and talk. That's all he want to do and get paid to do it. Nice. Yeah, he landed pretty good. Considering everything, Cliff has landed pretty good. And everybody always has good things to say about him, you know. So, you know, having him around, I think some of the players said that they was happy that he was still in the building, you know. So they have a respect of him. Uh Will uh Will Stumbling, 45. Yeah, peace to you, peace. You know, so continuing down on the chat, uh the Hornets front office, uh Aunt Jam, she is telling the Hornets front office, proven methods to get the Hornets back in the playoffs because he was there before. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's why I call him a steal. You know, the deck say bye, Cliffy. Yeah, Cliff is moving over. He's not, um, yeah, they moving Cliff over. So he won't be talking from a coach's point of view. This will probably be the reason why I'm playing this. This will probably be the last time we see Steve Clifford at a, at a podium like this. This is the last time we'll see his face probably ever. Again, he's tucked away somewhere. We won't see him no more, right? You see what I'm saying? You know, Macarena. So from the outside perspective, he is now seeing things to tell the coach what he should do. Yeah, so, no, he's basically there to give advice, right? That's what he is. He's very knowledgeable in basketball. He's been around. You need people like that around in leadership areas, you know, to, you know, you know, it's, it's always good to have. I like the fact that Jeff is going to keep him around because Jeff can use his knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Jeff can use him. For what he offers. And Cliff is ready to give it all over to Jeff. You know what I'm saying? And Jeff can use that. You know, so Jeff will pick his brain. Okay, what you think about this? You know, I'm thinking about bringing this player in. He got this skill set. If we put this player in with this skill set. Within a system where we play defense like this. How do you see him fitting in there? And then Steve Clifford can say based on film. Because I am sure. Once you know Cliff is going to chill for a few days. Jeff going to put his ass to work. As soon as he come back, we're about to draft. And Steve Clifford want to be a part of it. I, you know, I want to learn about the draft and everything. Oh, Jeff, I'm going to put you to work, baby, because it's time to prepare for the draft anyway. So it's going to be like, Steve, I need you to do film on these guys right here. I need you to do film on Star. I need you to do film on Capital. I need you to do film on, on these other players, right? Because depending on where we pick, we got to have a profile for the players that we think that will fall to us, depending if we, you know, we right now, uh, if everything goes, you know, by the, you know, in order, we may have the third or the fourth pick. 
So I need these guys to be um, analyzed. I need you to break them down. And based on certain scenarios that we lay down, you know, make recommendations on who you think would be good names for us to focus on. Now, I believe that. I really believe that. I believe that, right? You know, 100% Mozart. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so let me see. Let's go down some more. R.O., you know, um, uh, and uh, Macarena. Yeah, he's giving advice. You know, R.O., yeah, the Grant Williams interview hasn't been played yet. That'll be next to last. I'm going to play Grant Williams next to last. LaMelo being the last interview. We still got Seth. I'm going to play Seth Curry's interview next. Then we're going to go to Mark Williams, Miles Bridges, Brandon Miller, Grant Williams, and LaMelo Ball. That's the order I'm going to play the interviews in and everything. You know, and, and just to make sure I made my point, speaking of Grant Williams, because I posted that receipt for a reason, LaMelo will appreciate and like the fact, just like Steve Clifford said, it's another thing he said. He said that Melo can be coached. Melo wants to be coached. Melo's not a diva. He's been portrayed, unfortunately, because of Ball and the family. The narration has been that Melo's a diva. It is what it is. It is what it is. Some of that is residual from that damn reality show, man, which is a blessing and a cursing. You know, it is the great thing. But but the narration of the Mellow Ball has not been able to escape that narration from the reality show. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna challenge me on that. You look at how the Mellow Ball is portrayed in Ball the Family, right? Everybody judges the Mellow off of that damn reality show, man. You know, so it took people to actually come and be with him to know, okay, okay, what the fuck? You know, it's like because that created the that crafted the my media narrative around him. You know what I'm saying? You know. Steve Clifford has never threw LaMelo under the bus. Borrego constantly throwing LaMelo under the bus. Clifford never has thrown LaMelo under the bus. He always took up for LaMelo. He made excuses. Whatever. I have never heard Steve Clifford directly throw LaMelo ball under the bus. Now, the bigs, he's tossed Nick. You know, Mark and Nick Richards, he, he whoop on them all the time. But LaMelo ball, he don't. He called LaMelo ball Steph. He says that. He said in this interview, which is interesting, he said LaMelo can be the top one or two player on the championship team. Number one or number two. Ooh. 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 Number two to who? Ooh. Ooh. Let me tell you something now. LaMelo and Brandon together, they don't look like they're worried about who will have that, have that position. It don't look like it. They are gushing over Brandon Miller. Nothing. He talks him up. Glows. They all glow from top to bottom. They glow about Brandon. Brandon, so get used to it. You know, so some of some, so some of the Miller Ball faithful up in here, don't trip because Brandon Miller is being talked about as being on a high level, very close to or near the Miller Ball. That's a good problem. It's not a bad problem. You know what I'm saying? And what we should do here is not feed that and make it into a problem. So on this platform, I'm not going to make that into a problem. On this platform, I'm going to talk that up. On this platform, I'm going to speak unity between those two and not envy and jealousy. On this platform, I'm not going to talk down Brandon to talk up LaMelo. On this platform, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to talk up LaMelo to talk down Brandon. Not on this platform. Now, if there are energies like this who flow through here, you go to do other platforms and that shit. That's not this platform. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Hey, Biz, why are you laughing at? Whoa. Oh, because I'm looking at two chats, right? <laughs> I'm looking at two chats, right? I'm, I'm looking at the chat over here. I'm, the control room is set up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at y'all. You're showing it to me in real time, but I'm looking at this. R.O. Uh, yeah, not true. I remember Cody Zeller talking about how LaMelo uh, it wasn't how he thought he was, you know? Uh, Bizza, I'm laughing. What you laughing at, Bizza? Albert, peace, Albert. Y'all need both. We do. We do. And this, did you, did you hear Steve Clifford, what he said? He said, balanced play wins in today's NBA. And I don't disagree with him. That's why you got to listen to the, that's why I played him. Y'all might as well sit down. I mean, look, he come in and out, pass by, you know, we're going to, we, we want to, we're going to break down all these interviews today, right? Because this is probably the last extensive content I do in Charlotte until the new head coach's pitch, 
because we're going to switch over to um, the WNBA draft is today. I got Andrew Reese content coming out. I'm dropping that content later to this evening, you know, because they've been, I, I, I don't like the way, I don't like the way Andrew Reese is being handled. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to, I'm going to, and I already drop a video on how, how my thoughts on that, right? You know, because I'm curious to see where she's going to go. You know, we will, you will see WNBA content. You will see Angel Reese content on this platform, you know, because I think we got, we got to talk her up because I see what they're doing right now with Angel. We, I'm not going to allow that to happen. So I'm going to talk up Angel Reese on this platform. Now, if y'all like Caitlin, fine, you know, but I'm talking, this is Angel Reese's house over here at the BTW. You understand what I'm saying? So, so we're gonna we're gonna do some Reese Angel Reese, especially she falls into my is she fall into my city in Chicago? Oh, it's just perfect. Where it is, she might fall to Chicago. Please, it'll be perfect. Oh, speaking of which, speaking of Chicago, um, a new series will be starting called the Tri Bull series, where I'm gonna talk about my Bulls as well. So the Hornets and Bulls and whatever team Angel Reese is on will be the three teams in terms of basketball that I'm gonna talk about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we need both. Balance play wins in this NBA. A big three, that's over with. You need a dynamic, you need a dynamic pl player to build around. You need two dynamic players plus other players around them, right? But like Steve said, in this NBA, you don't need, in the past, you could kind of get away with an eight-man roster. In this league, you need, you need to go down to the 10th man, you know, because the injuries, load management, and just what the pace of the game is different. You need more legs. Ain't like it was when you could play slow and play eight players. They're playing fast right now. It is what it is. You know, he said they'll all be ready for by training camp. You know, internal and external improvements. I'm just going over my notes right now. Um, that, that I'm going over my notes right now that I wrote down when I was listening to this interview. You know, he talked up Cody Martin. Yeah. In my opinion, Leaky Black can do everything that Cody's doing for cheaper. That's my opinion on that one. Leaky can step right in to, to do Cody Martin's role right now. I've seen enough from Leaky to say that. That's what I believe. You know, um, internal, you know, so keep that, keep, and I hate to speak in terms like this, you know, keep their assets that they have and add assets in the offseason. I think that's what Clifford is alluding to, maybe something like that, right? You know what I'm saying? Roster versatility. See, versatility, you need players that can play several positions right now. Specialists, you're not specialists. Three and D, you can't be. You can't be a three point specialist alone and play a lot of minutes in this NBA. And that, I'm just this is what I'm saying. Hey, jump in the chat. I you 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 have to be if you're going to shoot the three, you have to be able to play defense. Three and D, right? And then switch on defense, switch ability, versatility. And skill with size. If you got that, then you're winning this league. You know what I'm saying? It's no longer if you can't have size without a certain amount of skill. He even talked about Mark Williams in terms of his instincts on defense. See, a lot of people down Mark Williams because he ain't good enough. Whatever the fuck that shit is, you know. It's like, what the fuck you mean? Oh, he ain't good enough. He came from Duke, he ain't printed proper like Jalen Duran. Get the fuck out of here. The man just said that the man's instincts for a seven footer, he's moving quicker for a man his size, right? And when Mark was healthy, he was a problem on defense. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, Mark played like the 10 man. We talked about that on this platform. Will, will he be the Iron Man or the 10 man? So hopefully, he'll be more stronger. You know what I'm saying? He'll be more stronger. You know, they did just come off of rehab and everything you know he talked about how Lamelo ball was even here. <laughs> this man said that in the dallas game when Lamelo came back he wasn't even in shape he was this motherfucker on that nine game run he was almost averaging a damn triple double out of shape and as we know on one leg get the fuck out of here man you know the mellow ball needs to be pushed because you can bring greatness out of him that way. Grant Williams is not in Dallas right now because they want they want they want they want Lucas ass to be kissed there in Dallas and they don't want no one to push or challenge him. Whether or not it's Luca or no, the organizational attitude on Luca Doncic is that you don't push Luca. You don't talk, you you don't push Luca. You don't tell him he's not bringing in the practice. You don't tell Luca that. Whereas Grant 
if LaMelo, if Grant Williams feels like LaMelo Ball is not really pushing it the way he should, Grant will step to LaMelo and say, LaMelo, step it up, baby. I've seen you. You can do better than this. You can do way better than this, LaMelo. And LaMelo Ball is the type that will say, you're right. I will. Oh, there's a, Grant said a lot of other stuff about that, too. When we play the interview, you're going to hear it. You see what I'm saying? You know, so Dallas and fucked around and gave <laughs> a nice catalyst in Grant Williams for that team. Because Grant is in LaMelo's ear and Brandon Miller's ear. He's in all their ears, man. Pushing them to what? To be better because what? He believes in them and he wants to win. You know what I'm saying? And he knows that you can't be a little pussycat to win in this league. You know what I'm saying? Questioning European Messiah, get you kicked out of the house. Yes, several have the baby. Luca has caught several bodies, Aro. What? Shit. You know how the bodies Luca done caught some motherfucker sassing him? Shit. Get out of here. Huh? And jams. That's what's messed up. A very loaded uh, Hornets team with Larry Johnson, Kendall Gill, and Lonzo Mourning with outside forces having all three eventually conflicting with each other. That's right. Women. I heard that was a woman thing. I heard, I heard that was a woman thing. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I heard that was some, there was some females involved in that little beef uh, between those three. And there was some jealousy, too. Oh, it's crazy. We do not want to foster jealousy between Brandon Miller and damn the Miller Ball. We don't want to feed that energy. And on X, we need to combat that every time we see it from Israel and others on one side and, and the others on the other side. Some of those damn the Metal Stand accounts on the other side. Because that's not what this is. You know what I'm saying? I just like how they now have the draft lottery in the middle of the May instead of April, immediately after the, the season's over. Okay. So they give them time, I guess, to, you know, get ready. Let me see what else. Um, Dallas, yeah. He said the Dallas game, the blood was in the shape, you know. And he said this, which is important. And we, then we're going to go to Seth. He said, and then we we'll go to the chat. You need two all-stars, at least two defenders, two great rebounds to compete. Yes, sir. I believe it. I believe that Albert. He said, play your position. As far as what he was going to be doing. Meaning, he ain't going to be down in the coach's office still trying to tell the new coach what to do. That ain't what Cliff going to be doing. He said, they give me three things to do. I'm going to do those three things. That's it. That's all. You know, I kind of want to be in the room for preparation for draft and stuff. But whatever it is that they will, because they haven't told him what they want him to do. They're going to tell him that this Monday. Jeff going to give him his orders this Monday. You know, What's today? Today's Monday shit. Well, they're going to take off this week, but next week when they come back, you know, they're going to give he, Jeff going to lay down what he wants him to do. And Steve Clifford said, I'm not here to hit home runs. I'm here to play a role. That's it. That's all. Meaning, you know, the days of me trying to overtake people and all this stuff. Look, I just want to settle into a role and be a good soldier. I was a good soldier here. I'm going to be a good soldier up there. Wherever that's at. So Cliff is going to be fine. I'm glad they kept him. Huh? Bets. All Hornets X players uh, are are playoff bound except for Devontae Graham. That's right. They are. They are. Let's see. Let's continue down. Let's see. Now the chat. Let's go down further into the chat. Then we'll go to the next interview. You know. Um let me see. Let's go down here. Dex. Jeff has told Cliffy to bow out gracefully. Oh, yeah, well, the, the press conference is a graceful press conference, but but uh, Cliff's going to be busy up in the organization. Uh, Jeff has pulled him close to him. He's going to have him doing stuff on a different level. So Cliff ain't chilling. He's just moving out of this. They're going to put a new face as the coach, a fresh, young face, hopefully. I'm hoping they, I'm hoping they don't go for a retread. But whatever they get as the coach, he got to know what he wants. So it, it's going to be interesting to see who they pick. Very interesting. You know, uh, bottom lines that he's saying, and Jams, uh, Cody Martin and Seth Curry are, are the best. If they just focus on being great defensive players for the Hornets. Hey, not overdoing it. Play defense and shoot that three pointer. Three and D players. You need those. You know, you need those. You know what I'm saying? You know. And Cliff reminds me uh, that LeVar has the metal ball already tougher than the battleship steel. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Uh, Cliff reminds me of the hologram from the museum, the remake of the Time Machine movie. That has unlimited information could be used to pass on. Yes, he will. Okay, so that's it. So we're going to go now to step. Let me see. Let me see how much time we got here. Yeah, let me let me see. These are shorter interviews, so these should go by pretty quickly, everybody. 
I don't want to hold everybody here, but I want to get through these. Steph's interview, Seth, Seth's interview was eight minutes. Then we're going to go to the starters, whom I think going to be the starters next year. You know what I'm saying? I believe the starting five for the Charlotte Hornets next year is going to be LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, Grant Williams, and Mark Williams. I believe that's going to be the starting five next year. Grant kind of lose to it. You know, you know, you can't, you know, well, so let me see. Uh, huh? I wouldn't be surprised if it was Grant Williams that had Taylor and Brown playing at a high level for Boston. I said this and I said this in my Grant Williams um, uh, video that I just uploaded, the one that I got a receipt from. Kai Jones and James Booknight will still be, if Grant Williams is on this team, James Booknight will still be on this team. I believe that. And I believe Kai Jones will still be on this team too because Grant has been in their ears already. You see what I'm saying? I think Grant's presence would have helped James Booknight go through some of the things some of the trouble that he went through. Because as you saw, Kai Jones, when he came to the Clippers, who did he thank? The NBA basket, the Players Association is who Kai Jones thanked for helping him through his issue. And who's the VP of the Players Association? Grant Williams. And the one thing that Grant Williams focused on is the quality of life and the mental health of the NBA players. That's his wheelhouse right there in Charlotte. Come on now. Dallas, y'all fucked up. Dallas fucked up big time because Grant Williams was too uppity. You lose a good, you lose a great resource because Grant Williams talked a little bit to have the nerve to look at that crack in the eyes and talk to him. I, I, fuck him. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I said it. You know? Kerry Don. Wait a minute. What you say, Kerry? Grant was too intense for the match. <laughs> you know, he wasn't too intense. They want him to just lay down like PJ's doing. You know, and, and, and bow to Luka Doncic. That's not how you... Luca, if Luca is not pushed, Dallas are not going to win. He'll just be a Luca, just be a flapping seal down there in the Mavericks. Luca can get away with talent only for so long. Eventually, he's going to have to put the work in. And in the West, Luca needs to be pushed because on the other side of Luca is Zion, who looks like he's focused and hungry. I got content coming for him. You got John Morant. You got Anthony Edwards. You got damn SGA on the other side of Luka Doncic. And you got Victor Wimbenyama. All five of them, Devin Booker, all of them on the other side, and Joker. All of them on the other side of Luka Doncic. And you don't need no one to push him? Get the fuck out of here. Charlotte will be at full advantage. Charlotte will use the full advantage of an MP. What? That's right. Albert, is it me? Or why did all this rap beat start when they ran bombed Israel? Because I already did, I, I did some content on that too, um, Albert. That will be the offensive bonfire. I have some, I have some interest. Having been, having been over in, I, I was on a security contract in Iraq when Donald Trump killed Suleiman. Algorithm is okay. You know what I'm saying? I was over there when it went down last time. At Camp Taji, I was there on the contract through the bombs. I talk, I talk about that whole scenario from start to finish and some other content that I'm going to post called the Suleimani Incident on the Offensive Bonfire, Albert. In a couple of days, I'm going to drop that because I have another piece of content where I had a discussion with a Russian by the banks of the Red Sea. I was over there um, chilling by the Red Sea, and I happened to run into a, a Soviet sniper over there, former sniper. This is when Obama was president. And me and him had like a uh, an hour conversation about Russian politics, man. And we talked about Putin back then before he was president again, bro. What? Anyway. That's an unfiltered bonfire, not the sports channel. You know, go and sub to it. You know, hey, Albert, go and sub to that channel, man. That's why all that stuff, uh, all that stuff you're talking about, I'll talk about that over there. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's going to be uploaded, Albert. It's going to be on the, but it's going to be on the unfiltered bonfire channel, though, not this one. This is, I've decided to move all this stuff over to the, to, to, so that people don't want to get caught up in the politics and all this stuff. I know Aunt Jams don't like none of the stuff going on right now with the gods and stuff, you know, and he just want to focus on his corners as others do. So I respect that. But I have so much. I have such a large bag. Pause. The bag is so large, man. So I moved all that other stuff over to the Unfiltered Bonfire channel. So you find all that over there. You find all that. Drop the link. The link to the Unfiltered Bonfire channel. Let's see. Yeah, sir. I can do that. I sure can. It's actually posted right on the channel. Let me see. Let me go to it right now. I have no problem dropping the link, baby. Especially when it's my shit. Here we go. Let me see. Let's go up here. Boom. Let's do a copy. Yeah, we can drop the link. Shit. What? You ain't got to say nothing. Say less, bro. Say less. 
Paste. Wow. That's the Unfiltered Bonfire channel. PTW. Right? Since I'm on that, might as well. Shit. <laughs> then we're going to get to this other stuff. You know, y'all just chill with me. You know? Y'all just chill with me on this Monday. Right? I've been, it's been a while since I've been with y'all, man. So, that's the music channel. Go and subscribe to both of those channels. J. Cole content is on the music channel. I just dropped it. J. Cole and Lizzo. Right? Oh, yeah, we lit, goddammit. Yes! The fuck? Niggas thought they was gonna niggas niggas I thought they was gonna kill this shit. I got way too much in my bag, boy. <laughs> you can run and you, you can try if you want to. Shit, get ready. I got way I got way too much in my bag. Shit, way too much. And I'm gonna talk my shit. Yes. Shit. This ain't just this is just one aspect of the chief, man. Nigga, shit. The fuck. Motherfuckers thought they thought they thought they knew me. Them niggas ain't knew me because I didn't put it all out there. You know, I was going to. Well, anyway, hey, it is what it is. Anyway, yeah, go to those two. Um, filter bonfire discussion with the Russian. Let me see. There's some other stuff, guys. There's there's plenty for you to feed on already. There's plenty for you to eat on. It's already 71 subscribers over there. And then there's uh, 18 for the music channel. That's but 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 that's about to grow as well. Yeah, it's about to grow. Shit, you know what I'm saying? All my channels, all three of my channels are going to be blowing. All three of my channels are in the process of being blown up. This one too. So let's go to the next interview, everybody. We're going to go. I'm trying to see, man. Do I want to do Seth? Do y'all want to hear Seth? Because <laughs> really, I want to go to the starters, man. I want to go to Mark Williams, man. I want to go to him. I'm going to go to Mark Williams. You know, we can come back. If, if y'all call for Seth, if y'all call for Seth, I'll go back to Seth. Do y'all really want to hear from Seth Curry? I want to get to the start. I want to get to the starting place. The starting five for next year. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to get to. Seth, I'm mean, you know, Seth, y'all got the y'all can go to Seth, man. I'm not gonna go to Seth Curry. You know what I'm saying? Yes, very good information. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go on over there. All right, let's go to the next one right quick. We're gonna go. Let me put my headphones back on. We're about to go to we're about to go to Mark Williams. Now again, this is my first time hearing what they're saying. So we're responding in real time. All right. So let's go to Mark Williams. It's a short interview. It's 11 minutes or 12 minutes. All right. So let me go to him. Go to Mark. Bow. Host. We're going to put this on pause. Cut off one mic. I know. I know it's been a minute since I've been up here. So, um, Mark, like you said, it's been a little while since I've had a chance to talk to you. I guess overall, how are you feeling right now? Is there any, uh, I guess, light you shine on what kind of transpired through this season? Uh, I guess, late November? Yeah, um, I'm, st I'm definitely starting to feel better. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I played. Um, uh, it's definitely been tough. You know, I haven't really dealt with a injury where I've been out during the course of a season. It's normally stuff I can, you know, deal with and push it to the side. Um, so it's definitely been different for me. Uh, I feel like my teammates have, you know, done a good job of keeping, you know, my mental okay. Uh, same goes for Coach Cliff. You know, we would talk about, you know, the games, what I would see, um, you know, like tendencies of other bigs in the league, knowing that, you know, next season and the seasons after that, I'm going to be facing up against these guys. So keeping me engaged, um, you know, doing stuff in the weight room, just really doing what I can. Um, but now I'm definitely starting to feel better. I'm able to do, you know, a little bit more and I'm, you know, feeling better by the day. And it's not really something where it's going to linger. You know, I'm, you know, aiming to play, you know, every game uh, next year. So it's definitely not something um, I like doing, sitting out. Uh, it's definitely tough. You know, it was a tough year for us, so I'm excited for the future, though. We, we were kind of shrouded for time table of when it happened and what the injury was. What can you tell us about when you felt it, what it is, and what the road to recovery looks like? Yeah, so 
first game I started to feel something in my back was probably like when we played Brooklyn. Uh, got ice after the game, but it wasn't anything crazy. I played, we played a couple more games, Minnesota. I played, um, but the first game where I was really like, it's bothering me was that Chicago game. I didn't play Chicago. Uh, and then the game after that was Toronto. Um, I tried, I tried playing there and then I left in the third quarter. I was like, this, this isn't just your normal, like I fell down. Um, so yeah, since then I've been out, um, and I've just been, you know, rehabbing since, uh, it's not like a surgery situation or anything like that. It's just a matter of, you know, getting back to being comfortable enough to play, uh, being able to move how I moved, jump how I jumped and just, again, not having it being something that lingers. But there wasn't like an incident that you remember where... Not a particular play, no. I can't, I can't pinpoint exactly falling or getting hit or something. It was just more of like a afterwards when the adrenaline, you know, went away. I was like, oh, yeah, something happened. You said you're able to do more than before. Mm -hmm. What are you able to do specifically? And, and I guess what is your ramp up to full strength? Yeah, um, I'm able to, you know, shoot some, uh, do some more in the weight room. Um, you know, a lot of stuff I'm doing now is just uh, focusing on my core, um, you know, getting that stronger. But, you know, before it was uh, a situation where I couldn't really, you know, put too much stress. So uh, overhead lifting I was trying to avoid. But, you know, now I'm starting to do a little bit more of that. Um, but, yeah, just a build up back to play, back to, you know, <laughs> doing basketball activities uh, outside of just shooting, you know, moving around. Uh, playing live, getting back in shape, stuff like that. So it's definitely not something I'm worried about heading into the camp or anything. Is it upper or lower back? Lower. But just to confirm, Coach actually mentioned last week or two weeks ago that you had a little bit of a bone issue. Mm -hmm. What was that like? And how were you able to, I guess, to kind of get past that to the point, I guess you said you won't need surgery. Um, are you going to be okay? Yeah, I'm totally going to be okay. Uh, it's just, It's just a matter of, you know, building a uh, strength back up, building it so it's not a, a lingering issue. Um, just, you know, mobility, um, strength, and uh, yeah, just overall comfort. And this is obviously two years, two seasons, you haven't played as many games you hope to mm. already. I mean, how much does that bother you? And how much do you want to make sure you aren't getting yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it totally, it totally bothers me. Um, the sitting out, shit, oh, the sitting, <laughs> the sitting out sucks. Um, you know, for uh, my rookie year, you know, I was uh, not in the rotation. I was playing in the G, uh, and then when I had that opportunity, I dislocated my thumb in Detroit, um, but popped it back in. I was cool. Taped it up was able to just play, you know, the rest of the season after letting it, you know, heal a little bit. And then, you know, after the season was over, I got surgery to, you know, really fix it. It hasn't been a problem since. And then, you know, this year, you know, having uh, the back issue. I know hurting your back is a big guy. You know, you always get that label. So I think that was a really big piece for me, not trying to force anything and not have that be an ongoing issue for me. So, you know, in the future, I don't want that to be a label for me. I'm not a guy that likes to sit out. It's not a situation like that at all. Um, I'm just really excited, you know, for next season to play. And obviously a goal for me is to play every game and, you know, have a season that goes past April, what, 13th, 14th? I'm not trying to do that. So I'm trying to be playing for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does part of you have that in you, like it's pent up, like you want to come out there and, and just kind of unleash on the league? Yeah, I mean, that first game uh, of year three for me, I'll definitely be excited. But, yeah, I mean, it'll just – I mean, it's just, like I said, a credit to, you know, the coaching staff and my teammates, uh, you know, for keeping, keeping my head in it. Um, and then as far as rehab goes, obviously not being too aggressive, you know, 
Uh, it's unfortunate, obviously, we don't have a postseason, but fortunate in the sense that I have more time to have this to not be a problem. So, um, you know, heading into, you know, camp, heading into the start of the season next year, uh, it won't be something that I'm going to be worried about. And uh, I'll totally, totally be excited that first game out. This game was meaningful for you guys the last month or so. Absolutely. Have you been able to come back and play, you think, or is it one of those things where? I, I, think, I think it's one of those things where I have to look at the bigger picture for my career. Uh, um, I'm not trying to have this, like I said, be an ongoing thing for me. I, I just want this to be, you know, a one and done situation. Uh, just being able to play, uh, you know, for years and years to come. And I just want to be, you know, comfortable playing how I want to play. I don't want to feel like I got to play a certain way or, you know, do certain things to not have it be. I just want to be you know, the Mark Williams that I know. And I think this was the best course of action of going about it. And I don't want anybody to be concerned about, you know, like you said, having that label about me. I'm really excited to get back and be that player that, you know, you all have seen and more. From the 18 and 19 games that you did play, mm -hmm. what areas of growth did you see in your game compared to that level you had as a rookie? What areas did you identify that you need to shore up when you do get that percent? Yeah. Um, uh, 19 games. Uh, yeah, it's it's tragic, but I I mean, it makes you remember the games you played. I had some good games. Um, you know, a good game Boston. The Wizards obviously had the career high rebounds. Indy. Uh, that was a really good game for a lot of the guys. For me, that was a career high game. Um, yeah, I think just I was definitely more confident, um, more aggressive in how I was playing. Uh, you know, my teammates were trusting me, finding me in all the right uh, spots on the floor um, defensively. Uh, definitely starting to, the game was starting to slow down. So being able to communicate with my teammates uh, was something I thought I got a little better at. And that's something that can always improve. Um, you know, I feel like our team has a lot of talent. Uh, there's going to be, you know, some new pieces added, you know, through the draft and the summer and all that. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely some bright spots that you saw, even though the season didn't go as, you know, as expected with all the guys out and stuff out of our control. But, you know, definitely uh, really excited. But there's always room for me to grow, um, you know, offensively, you know, being able to shoot the ball, being able to play make, uh, you know, being in better shape, you know, when I'm back out there, being able to play extended minutes, you know, 30, 35 plus minutes, whatever it is. Um, so I'm definitely excited for that. Um, yeah. Mark, you said you studied other big names. What are some things that you that have stood out to you and had some tough time really for film? Yeah, so <clears throat> me, Cliff, um, Rex, uh, you know, when Jeff got here, he stopped in. We would talk about like the last five or so games. I would write up things I saw within the teams and within uh like their fives. So, you know, team by team, player by player, at least as the fives went. Um we would talk about, you know, things I saw, things they did well, things they didn't do as well. Um, and, you know, I would just talk about them, you know, teams you would play multiple times in a year, um, especially like teams in the East. You know, I'd have some overlap, but those are the things where you really start to pick up on stuff like that. So, like I said, I appreciate uh, him keeping me engaged and doing stuff like that because, you know, it's hard, you know, being out for that long. Like I said, it's not really something I'm used to doing. And, um, you know, doing that helped me stay engaged. Mark, obviously you're focused on your own progression, but you know, as you saw the team around you kind of grow this year, what's one thing that maybe makes you most excited to be back in six months and play with these guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bright spots. Um, you know, Brandon, it's crazy. Brandon wasn't even starting at the beginning of the year. He was, you know, six-man vibes, and then – all of a sudden, he's right behind miles and minutes. Um, you know, for him, um, you know, him able to display his, you know, scoring ability, you know, everything he's capable of doing on the floor on both sides of the ball. You know, he's tall, long arms, moves well, obviously bouncy. Um, uh, so I think for him, you know, having the year he had um, was definitely a cool thing to see.
Well, well, well. Hey, y'all enjoying this so far? Let me know. Oh, and Reese is coming to the city. She's coming to Chicago. Oh, it's gonna be on next. It's up. It's up. It's up. I've been wanting to talk about my city for a while anyway. So Andrew Reese for the Bulls. I mean for, for my for my sky, goddammit. And then I'm talking about my Bulls, regardless who's there. Hopefully Lonzo will stay about Lonzo next year. You know, if I have concerns about my Bulls, but I'm gonna put that in a separate stream and build up a probably build up a whole another tribe for the Bulls streams. Cause you know, Charlotte, my Charlotte, uh, the BTW Charlotte probably won't be in those uh streams, but the BTW Bulls. Oh yeah. Hell yes. 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 Wipe your shoes off and you come over to my house now. Ha ha ha. Oh shit. So what did you all get from that interview? I found some interesting things from that interview. Let me see. Let's go back to the chat. Let me see. Like chat. Hold it. Let me see. Let's do a like check right quick. 16, okay. 16 likes. Let's get it to 20. All right. And we're gonna we're gonna run through a little bit quicker. We ain't gonna hold, we ain't gonna keep it long. You know. Um, hopefully, okay, then we got um well Mark, you know, Mark just say he took his time to, to get it right. You know what I'm saying? He looked like he's ready. Everybody ain't got to be all crazy with it. Mark looked like he's ready. The thing I like, Cliff and Jeff. He said, Jeff, stop. See, this is the thing. Jeff Peterson stopped and talked to Mark about studying the center. So while he was hurt, he was studying Joker. He was studying Embiid. He was studying all the fives, especially the ones in the East. And he's talking about what he sees. He's studying what they're doing. I love it. So they maximize his time. I'm sure, I'm, I am sure that if they're doing that, if they're doing that with um, Mark Williams, I'm sure LaMelo has similar things where he studied the different star players of different teams to see, okay, what he did, what did they do to win, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure that was going on, right? You see what I'm saying? You know, uh, let me see. Seth is just going to end up being a broadcast team. Yeah, I think they're setting Seth up to, to be in the front office somewhere or on the broadcast team. I think that's what, I think that's what the Eric Collins and them continues to allude to. You know, let's watch that closely. You know, Seth just popping up on the sideline. That's not just on the whim. I think they're getting Seth ready. He's gonna be in the he's gonna be in the building. You know? He's gonna be in the building. Uh let me see. Uh, uh what business say he stays playing every game. <laughs> he's gonna be ready. He's been hearing all the noise. And he knows that if he as a big, he can't get the he cannot get the injury from particularly back problem as a label as a big going to the fuck up his career. He'll never have a career if he's looked at as someone with back issues, you know. No business. He's saying that he only wants to be out most for a few games per season, not having to stop the majority of the season. You know, Angel Reese, this guy, Dex, Bizza, seems like a nice dude. Chicago, uh, uh, seems like a nice dude. Really hopes his back will be well. We hope so. Oh, Bizza, this guy, you coming to the Shot Town, Bizza? I thought that was Dex. Bizza, yeah, hey, come on up here, man. Come on up. Because I'm definitely doing Sky content. Now that Angel Reese is there, I'm doing her content. And I'm doing Chicago Sky content. And since I'm from Chicago, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Bizza, hopefully. Jeff. Yeah, see, Bizza. Jeff. Jeff. Got Mark doing homework. Y'all, you know, there's been a lot of sleeping on Jeff Peterson, man. Well, he ain't did nothing yet. Blah, 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 blah. This is what he's doing. He is stepping in and saying, hey, Mark, while you working on it, I need you. I need you to tell me. This is him. Because that's who he's talking to. I need. Let me see. Yeah. I need you to tell me what you see. We deal with Nikola Jokic. How you do, how you gonna deal with Jokic the next time we play out there in there? How you gonna deal with Embiid? How you gonna deal with Durant? How you gonna deal with Turner? Huh? Lopez. What? Chris Stapsin. How you gonna deal with him? Study all the fives. So he's been putting the work in. I like that. I like that. He said that Mark said that he's getting um he's getting more um you know, he's getting more comfortable communicating on defense, right? And Grant will help him with that even more. And that, um, here we go now. I'm going to see if these other venues go the same way. Brandon Miller's name keep coming up now. Don't y'all get, <laughs> don't y'all get in your feelings. 
about Brandon, please. You know, now there are certain ones who the scooters, the school Henderson lovers of the Hornets who are now jumped onto the Brand Brandon Miller bandwagon for their own agendas and everything. You know, uh they're they're gonna expect them to be pushing Brandon Miller a lot next year. Brandon should be taking the last shot. Brandon should have the ball in his hands. The metal ball, the whole the metal ball is unserious type. They they're gonna make they're gonna try to get that to stick. And so that's why over here we're gonna always gonna counter that narrative every time it comes up. Every single time it comes up. Ghost J. Everybody talking about the Hornets drafting a center or a point guard. They need an oversized small forward clip. Once Miles Miller at the two, where could they be need to be drafted unless Montez is zealous and Miles at the four works, in my opinion. They need to bring a big bring in a Dennis Rodman to be to improve their rebounding. But that's the thing. If Mark's issue with his back is solved, you know, I like them Bolden. I like I like that they got Bolden. Bolden could fuck around and supplant Nick Richards if he ain't careful. Bolden, I'll keep an eye on Bolden. I like I I'm 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 hoping they keep Bolden to be a part of that big rotation. But they 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 do they still have Najee tucked away in Spain, so we saw how that goes. And Nick has been Nick held it down. I mean, I ain't gonna, you know, I know, you know, we 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 hop on Nick, but Nick held it down. Nick held it down. He did. He held it down. Nick held it down. You know, I'm not gonna take that away from Nick. You know, I think they're drafting a forward goals. I think they are drafting a forward because I think that they depend on the coach and their philosophy. I think Brandon Miller is gonna be put at the two. I don't think he's gonna be put at the three. They're gonna put him at the two. They're going to draft a forward, depending on the forward, but that forward won't start. I'm telling y'all, I believe that starting five next year is going to be LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, Grant Williams, and Mark Williams. I believe that's going to be the starting five next year. I believe that. And Or unless unless that high draft pick dazzles, dazzles. I mean, really dazzles. You know, they'll be, they'll, he'll get his minutes, but I don't know if he's going to start right now, whether it's Castle or Cody Williams, or whomever, right? You know what I'm saying? So I think they're going to get a four because the mismatch, to have Brandon Miller at the two guard creates a mismatch every night. It's a six damn, six ten, a six ten shooting guard? Who can, what? <laughs> a second, what? Uh, uh, that can happen, what? Oh. Anyway, we're going to go to the next one, right? We're going we're gonna, to um, pick up the pace so I can kind of get through. Let me see where we have on. Yeah, we're going to pick up the pace, you know, so I can uh, get everything done, so I can hop into the studio. Myself, I got music to put out. Um, let me see. Let's see. We can go to the next one here. Let me see. We did. Mark Williams. We're gonna go. We go to. Hey, we gonna go. We gonna go to Brandon Miller right now. Then we are gonna do Miles, Grant Williams, and the Miller Ball be the last one. All right. So Brandon Miller. This is a twelve minute interview. All right. So we're gonna go to Brandon Miller right now. Let me see. Let's go do this. Cut the mic off again. Brandon was obviously a lot. Brandon, there's obviously a lot of uh, expectations coming into the season as a second overall pick. I'm sure you have expectations for yourself. Um, could you have envisioned your rookie season going, as, at least just individually, I know team-wise, you know, wasn't exactly what you guys wanted, but individually playing out uh, as well as it did for you? Uh, yeah, I think individually, um, I think it was, a, you know, great overall. Um, couldn't get, it, you know, the amount of wins that, you know, that we needed to, to, to have to, you know, um, be in the playoffs, um, and I think that's one of the things we're looking into um, more serious into going into the next season. Brandon, maybe I've had much time for reflection, but what's been the biggest thing that you've learned about the NBA just day to day uh, over this past year? You know, one of the things that you know my my older guys, uh, older teammates, and you know Cliff was telling me is just you know nothing's going to be easy, um, and I think that was the the mindset of going into every game is just. You know, go out there like like you're trying to you know win another ball game, um, and just nothing's gonna be handed to you, um, you know, with ease. So um, everything that 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 you know that you come out for is just got to be you know worked for and earned. Nick Smith Jr. talked about how big of a leap you took from the summer league to now. Can you just talk about how this season has gone for you and getting those rookie minutes and those accolades? 
Um, yeah, I think um, I think that that was a definitely a big step. Um, just winning, you know, rookie of the month. I think, you know, um, you know, all the credit goes to my teammates and my coaches just for you know believing in me, um, putting me in the right spaces. Um, and, you know, just you know from the from the jump, just boosting my confidence to be you know the the young leader that I am. Um, just to, you know lead guys uh, on and off the court. Um, so I think that's, you know, the, the the most important part here is just, you know, always having that bond with my, my older guys and, you know, Cliff, um, and, and just building the bond, making it stronger. Some of the guys mentioned it. You came in here this year as like a sixth man off the bench kind of player. That was your initial role. But you started a lot of games, played a lot of minutes. I mean, can you explain what it was like to kind of go from that to being like one of the main players this year, how much I guess that experience helped you going next year? Definitely. I feel like, um, you know, just having the experience to start games, you know, NBA games, um, you know, playing against the best, um, competing at a high level, and, you know, just having fun um, throughout the whole game. Um, I think that's kind of, you know, important for us uh, moving on forward and into the next season, um, just, you know, just to have experience under my belt. Um, and, you know, just, you know, having everybody coming back, you know, I think, I think this year kind of injuries kind of took a played a big part in, in our you know our lineup and our season. Um I think you know it, everything's going to be great next year. Um you know with a lot of experience and I th- I, th- I know Charlotte fans are going to you know have fun next season. And then uh Grant Williams in here talking about how players like yourself and Miles are going to challenge Melo this summer to kind of just make sure you guys are a better team, I guess. What about that? How much do you look forward to playing with him a little bit more this year? I think well, definitely, I've been in those talks too uh, with, with you know Melo, Miles, Grant, um, Cody Martin, um, Vasa, you know everybody. I think you know we we come together um, just to you know help Melo because we know um, you know his situations um, and just I think I think we're gonna you know make that push with him uh, you know just to help him you know get better uh, and you know play as many games he can next season. Got gotcha. <laughs> you. Uh, <laughs> nah. Um, like I've said, I think you know every game, 82 games, y'all gonna see me. You know, go out there and give it all I got. Um, you know, just to make all the winning plays, do everything I can, just to you know um, pull out wins for you know my team and just you know help them get better every day. Brandon, what would you say is one of the biggest things you're going to miss about playing for Coach Cliff next year? Uh, man, I, I'm going to definitely miss everything about Cliff. Um, like I've said, it's my first NBA coach, pro- first professional coach. Um, you know, I feel like he did a, a, a great job, you know, just putting his trust into me. Um, and, you know, all I could do is, you know, trust him with what he, what, what he was doing. Um, and, you know, I know Cliff is going to always have – you know, everybody's back, you know, whether it's on the court or off the court, um, you know. So that I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I love Cliff um, because, you know, he, he's all about his players. I'm sure there's a lot of different matchups that you can point out this season that you probably enjoyed, but what would you say was your favorite? Paul George. <laughs> 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 Paul George. No, PG, like, you know, I've been preaching it uh, since summer league. Um, you know, that's, you know, the GOAT. Uh, my goat, you know, my favorite player. I grew up watching him. Uh, so, you know, just missing that first game against him, it kind of, um, you know, it, it was cool. And then it, after a while, it started to get to me like I didn't play against him. So I had to see him uh, when he played here. Um, you know, it, I think he kind of put on a, a show for us that game. Uh, but, you know, I think, the, I think the, 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 the end, you know, it was always a happy ending, you know, did the jersey swap. Um, and that's that's one of the jerseys I'm definitely going to keep up forever. When we talked in the post game, you mentioned you guys working out this summer. I mean, how much did that, I guess, invigorate you? How much you say, okay, this is my guy to learn from him and stuff like this? You have to be able to do as much as possible. Yeah, um, like I said, just going into this summer, uh, it's going to be a, a great summer. Just you know, him working out in my presence. Um, like I said, my goat. Um, I think that's that's all I can ask for. You know, just to learn from the best. Um, and just, you know, just kind of pick up on, you know, some, some traits that he, he does. Um, not going not gonna to steal his whole flow, you know. <laughs> you know. I'll save that for, you know, year three. I think a lot of basketball fans knew what kind of talent you were, but they, 
were pleasantly surprised to see the, the hunger, the drive, the competitive spirit this year. So having the adversity of not winning, how much does that drive you beginning today to make Charlotte can go win? Definitely. Uh, you know, just you know, you go on weeks, weeks uh, of losing. It's not a you know a fun thing. Um, so I think that's kind of um, what we kind of. Uh, look back to and just kind of motivate ourselves off that um, and just going into the next season with the mindset of, you know, we got to win every game that, you know, that, you know, we can win every game that, you know, everybody say that we can't. Um, so I think we, we're just, we're just going to go out there and give it all we got and compete at a high level. Brandon, not just the Paul Jordan aspect, but we hear that the end game is a family. And in your first season here, how have you kind of been able to see that in real time? And do you look forward to also doing things like the Rico Hines runs and all these things in the off season? Uh, haven't really made you know the the plans of you know doing any runs this summer. Um, uh, so that, that's all I'm say about that. But you know, um, what was what was the first question? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I love playing. You know, you know that all the games that we you know that we played. Um, you know, it's just not just basketball. I feel like um, you know, every player out there, you know, either has something to prove. Um. And, and I think that's everybody's going to give their all every night, um, whether it's LeBron or you know anybody else. Um, and you know, other than this competition of basketball, I think it's it's all love from everybody. Um, it's never you know anything personal. It's all business, and you know it's all fun on and off the court. So um, you know we, we might be enemies on the court and be friends after the game. So um, it, I, I think that's the best part about the NBA. You kind of mentioned. I guess want to get to know the fans around a little bit more. I want to know them and talk to them and embrace them when they come up to you and say, how do you, I guess, has that gone on? Do you, if it happens, you like to kind of have the fans embrace you after not knowing if you were the guy, per se? Uh, I feel like, I feel like, you know, the fans came out to, um, you know, to the games that, you know, they supported, uh, all the home games, um, all the away games. I feel like they did a great job, you know, just, Showing up, um, showing that they, that they that they love Charlotte basketball, um, wherever it's at in any any state. Um, so just excited, to, excited for the next season, and excited for you know um, the, the 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 Charlotte Hornet fans. Brandon, as the next head coach, now that you have a year under your belt, what are the qualities that are most valuable to you in an next head coach that make you successful? Uh. Like I said, one thing about Cliff, he, he you know he loves his players. Um, I think that's one of the things that you know uh, for a coach and a player. I think it's the, the most important thing is the bond. Um, I think the chemistry on and off the court, um, and I think that's why you know Ose was a great coach to me, uh, just because you know he recruited me early, um, and it just the bond got stronger every every day. I know we heard you say several times earlier in the season that the only thing that you need to add to your game is just more weight to your frame. But like, is there anything else that outside of the way that maybe that you need to work on this summer? Uh, the weight for sure. Um, of course, it's, it's it's definitely parts of the uh, you know of everybody game that you know. Of course, they're gonna work on. Um, so I, I, I think the my my focus going into this summer is just you know building the 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 body weight that I need for next season. Is there a target weight for that? Two ten. Can you put into perspective just what it's been like for you to go from that path of just this time last year when you're kind of just figuring out the draft process to now to being one of the team's you know main players, core guy? Like you said, uh, during the draft process, I think I was just kind of figuring out. Um, you know, I kind of keep my circle small, uh, so it's just me and my family just trying to go through the process and just figure all this out. Um, but I think. You know, we have a, a, a year of uh, experience on our under our belt. Um, and I think you know, next season is going to be an even better year. Brandon, was there, a, was there a game or a moment this season where it all slowed down for you? Where the game was uh, you were like, okay, I'm here, I'm alive. Um, I think, all, I think all the games kind of were like that. I think... Um, I think my teammates did a great job just boosting my confidence. Um, I think that all comes with confidence, um, you know, to be able to take, you know, you know, three pointers in you know tough situations. It's not it's not an easy thing. You know, it's a lot of things that 
come across your mind. Um, and I think my teammates did a great job with just keeping me focused. Was there a moment where, when you say that, where you were hesitant and someone kind of put their arm around you? Hesitant? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what that's all they tell me. They just, I think they get more mad if I don't shoot it. So it's kind of you don't want them mad, so you you, you know shoot it. No, no, they've never needed that one. Go back to Nick Smith again. He mentioned in practice there's stuff that you do, plays, moves that you haven't put outside of the games yet in your bag. What about that? Do you feel like maybe you still have more to show people? Um, that you haven't shown this year? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I, f I feel like I have a lot to show um, that, I, that I didn't show. Um, of course, you're not going to show you know, everything and you know, all the games. Um, but like I said, next season is going to be a great season. So, uh, appreciate it, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Well, 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 well. Well, well, well. Hey, get used to it. That's all I got to say. Get used to it. He's good. Hey. Again, LaMelo Ball faithful, do not go crazy. He's going to be talked to as a franchise player. Just get used to it. Don't get in your feelings. Get used to it. I want to I want to I want to find out once LaMelo Ball's interview happens. I haven't seen it. I want to see if the I want to see if there's a difference in tone in how the reporters ask the mellow questions as opposed to what they just did with Brandon. I want to see. You know, I want to see that. You know, Brandon's going to put the weight on. <laughs> you notice that he's more comfortable than he was in the beginning? He's having fun. You know, uh, he's, you know, and they like it. See, that's the thing. See, this is the thing, too. The mellow ball, he doesn't really, he'll give, you know, little short answers, and that's, that's all. Brandon is more engaging with the media. So because of this, let's watch it now. Because of this, there's going to be a feel, because we're talking about human nature and stuff. There's going to be a feel of more of a favor type thing with Brandon, with the media, as opposed to when the mellow comes up. When is that? The mellow coming up, these little one-line answers. When is Brandon coming back? Now, Brandon is busy going back and forth. He's making them laugh in the room. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's engaging them. You know, he's politely checking them. Ah! <laughs> he, he, he did all that in 12 minutes. <laughs> you know, oh, hesitant. What do you mean? Oh, me hesitant? No, that's not it. You know, so, and another thing, Brandon talks about putting on the Charlotte fan base. He's talking about the fans a lot. He's the personality of the team. It is what it is. He is. You know, again, don't get your feelings over. That's his lane. Let Brandon be Brandon in his lane. Don't be tripping because he has a he just he, he just has a personality, man. You know he does. Thank you. That's I mean. That's gonna become an anthem. Thank you. If he, if Brandon, if you come past here now, I want my cut. You know, he should just do one day. I can see Brandon Miller in the middle of the damn Spectrum Center, right? And he just say, "Thank you." And then all the fans say, "Thank you." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can see that becoming a thing in Charlotte. I can see, thank you. I can see that thing becoming a thing in Charlotte, bro. You know, pass it to him, man. Some of the players may pass by here, man. You know, start that shit up. We may start it up. We may start it up. We start it up. We, we start it up, right? Huh? You know? Wait a minute. What y'all hear? And Jams. The Heat has three franchise players with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Boss. Yes. HP Sauce. Are you new, HP Sauce? Have not seen you here before. Have not seen you before, right? You know what I'm saying? Mellow career is over. Mellors just said the team had to come together to encourage him to play basketball. He really doesn't care anymore. No, I wouldn't say that. Did you not just, HP Sauce, did you not just hear Steve Clifford say that LaMelo Ball is, 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 is the best player that can be coached? That he had, he, that, that LaMelo Ball was able to be coached? 
that LaMelo Ball took Steve Clifford's coaching, looked forward to his coaching. What are you talking about? What do you mean he don't care? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What do you, what, what do you mean? Why y'all come up with this foolish, these dumb narratives from? He don't care no more. Because he was laughing on the sidelines? Stop that. Get out of here with that. Come on now. <laughs> he don't care anymore, huh? You know? No, no, no. I, 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 I think that he got caught up in a, in, a, in a situation where the PR looked kind of bad because Mike Breen and those bastards in New York decided to seize upon the fact that he was laughing on the sidelines. You know, which of course created the whole again. We can go when we go back to the um, and of course they're going to come together to push Lamelo. He's the franchise. They're going to do that. All teams do that. They rally behind their guy. That's what Brandon was saying. We're going to rally around Lamelo Ball and we're going to push him. Why? Because without him, we ain't going to go nowhere. We're not going to eat if Lamelo ain't cooking. God damn it! That's what they're saying. In order for us to eat, LaMelo got to cook in the kitchen. Right? So, anyway, let me see. It's good that the Hornets now have LaMelo and Brandon as the franchise players, possibly adding another one this coming draft. Yes. One, I give no weight to that. The Charlotte Media gave Brandon Media Award in his second year. Two, three years ago, they gave him Media Award to Miles Bridges. <laughs> Peace, Wanda. Peace, you, Wanda. You know, Lead guys on and off the court. Who is JT Thor? I don't know what they're gonna do. Clifford lying for him not to make him look bad. Clifford is a good guy, huh? Well, Clifford, Clifford doesn't. Clifford's not gonna throw them out on the bus. He's not gonna throw. Brandon Miller did say it. Brandon, Brandon did say it right in this right in this interview. He said Clifford loves his players. He looks out for his guys. He's gonna look out for his guys. You know, I like that. HP, you haven't answered my question yet. Are you new in here? Or have you been here before? I don't think I've seen you here before. You know what I'm saying? And James, Brandon is saying that he, the other Hornets players, will step up to take the physical load of LaMelo on the court to reduce the physical spread on LaMelo, him being healthy. They're just right. They're rallying. They're telling you they're going to rally around him. They are putting him out front. That's what that means. Not that he don't care. They're putting him out front. They're saying, LaMelo, it's yours now, baby. It's your turn, LaMelo. Gordon is gone. Terry's gone. PJ's gone. You know what I'm saying? They're all gone. Now, we're going to look to you, LaMelo. You're the guy. And we're going to rally around you now. And because of this, we're going to push you. Yes. Not because we don't think you can do it. We're going to push you because you, because we are going to follow and we're going to follow behind you. And we're going to take our cues from what you do, brother. Don't tell me, don't sit around here and tell me this bullshit about how you want LaMelo Ball to be the GOAT, but not be treated as one. LaMelo's not going to be tucked off to the side and yet be the greatest ever. No, that comes with a price. That comes with a price. That comes with a price. You know what I'm saying? LaMelo ain't no role player. He's not. He's not. Steve Clifford just said that LaMelo, if I'm, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Steve Clifford said this man could be top five in the NBA. Number one on the, on the, number one or number two on a, um, on a, um, on, on a team. Huh? You knew? Did you subscribe? Hey, welcome HP Sauce, baby. Welcome. Come on, come on back to HB Sauce. You know what I'm saying? You know, we 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 talk, we go back and forth. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna keep it respectful. You know, I disagree with that take though. I do. You know, I disagree with that take. I think I think that um I I, I I'm not ready to throw LaMelo away. I'm not ready, I'm not ready to do that yet. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna go on to the next interview right quick. We got Miles, we're gonna go to Miles Bridges next. We're about to go to Miles Bridges, Grant Williams, and then because we because I want to hear because we're hearing on the edges now of the players coming together around Lamelo. Now Miles and Grant were the two talking about it. You see, that's what they're look. The locker room belongs to Grant Williams and Miles Bridges. They're the leaders of the locker room. Opening up, freeing up, 
for LaMelo and Brandon to be the faces of the franchise. They're setting up different lanes for these men to operate in where they feel productive. LaMelo Ball doesn't have to be all up in the weeds in the locker room when you got Grant Williams for that. You got Miles for that. Grant and LaMelo and Brandon can be the killers on the court, right? And they can be pushed by Miles. They can be pushed by um, Grant Williams and others, Seth and others. Brandon said they pushing him. Oh, wait a minute. Now, there was talk. Brandon just said, yeah, I'm in those talks too. So is it that Brandon don't want to play either? Brandon doesn't want to play? So they do need to push him? Come on now. Let's not do that. Cooper said the team runs through the metal. Every player interview said that. Excuse me. Come on, business. Somebody, somebody jump in and help me now. Clifford just said. Clifford said the one, the one, not the two, the three, the four. The one piece that could, the one piece that make all this go did not play. They're not pushing the metal ball because they think he's lazy. They said, nigga, we need you, baby. Not because we don't think you want to play. We let you know how important you are, man. You are important to this, LaMelo. I know you humble. Baby, uh, forget about ball and family. Forget about the reality show. Forget about the bullshit that they said about you. Forget about the Gucci bags. Forget about the Lamborghinis. Forget about the $50 million house in L.A. You know what I'm saying? Forget about Triple B's. Forget, forget, forget about all that shit. Forget about La France. Forget, forget about the ice. Forget about the, the rings and the, all that other stuff. Forget about all that shit. Forget about the bad bitch. Forget about all that shit. Who are you? Underneath all that shit, beneath, let's strip all that shit away. Who the fuck are you, LaMelo Ball? And they have come back saying, this is the guy. We're going to push him. We're going to push him up. If they didn't believe in him, they wouldn't be offering to do so. They're not going to give that. Grant Williams saying, get me the fuck out of here. If Grant Williams felt that LaMelo wasn't serious, he would be telling the front office, get me the fuck out of here. He would be saying, get me the fuck out of here. What? Come on now. Huh? The man on the horn is the best facilitator as he continues to grow. But he, he's still 22. He still has to grow, man. I mean, y'all want him to be great right away. You know what I'm saying? That he has to grow into his greatness, man. That's true of all of them. And then with all of them are growing into that greatness. That's what, that's what make the journey so a beautiful journey. That I'm liking. I'm watching Zion grow. I'm watching Anthony Edwards grow. SGA is growing. You know what I'm saying? Palo is growing. You know what I'm saying? Tatum and Brown is growing. You know what I'm saying? You know, Devin Booker is growing. Ja is growing. You know, you know when he's playing, Wimby that came out the gates a uh, hot. Let's see if he'll grow next year. That's what this shit is all about. And LaMelo's growing. Trey grew. Trey led Atlanta to a finals last year. Can he get back to it? Jalen Bronson got New York as the number two seed this year. What are we talking about? Greatness is Greatness is baked. And slow cook in a crock pot. That shit ain't microwave. Anyway, no one is doubting the metal's fault, and the metal will never reach his ceiling because uh, because he isn't dedicated. What makes you think he's not dedicated? HP sauce. Identify. Tell me something because he's not dedicated. He's given up. All this stuff sounds nice. Identify directly, specifically. What has the metal done that made you say he's not dedicated? Please tell me. The thing I respect, this new Hornets environment, is they'll hold LaMelo accountable. Ain't nothing wrong with accountability now. Are we saying that the fact that, the fact that not RO, not only will LaMelo be held accountable, but the fact is that LaMelo embraces it. You know why Luca, you know why Grant is in Charlotte right now? Because Luca Doncic does not embrace it. Luka Doncic don't want to be held to account space for no, 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 no smart ass nigga. Anyway, stop. LaMelo has to embrace the accountability. Why? Because his daddy raised him to be accountable. LaVar didn't, you know, a lot of the stuff comes from you motherfuckers think that LaVar just let LaMelo do what the fuck he want to do. And he, you know, because he pulled him out because he did these other things, set up the JBA. All this shit is, all this shit is projection to what people think about LaVar Ball and how he, and how he moved with those boys. That's all this is. That's all it's ever been. Ain't got nothing to do with LaMelo Ball. LaMelo and Lonzo and Jello catches a lot of LaVar strays. And then it's come down and saying LaVar spoiled them, so they won't be shit. They don't want to say that. 
Lavar spoiled them so they don't have no hunger. Which is an insult. The damn Trump family can have a goddamn empire started by Trump, yet his children uh, continue the empire somehow. They're not dedicated. They're lazy. But a LaMelo Ball can't extend the empire of his father? Stop that. HP sauce. The problem is LaMelo's overdoing it. He's putting the whole team on his back. The man was coming back early. LaMelo isn't a bitch like Luca. You're damn right. Shit. I think the whole team would be held accountable. Moving forward, accountability of the team lack with the old regime. That's right, Wanda. It's not just LaMelo Ball being held to account. Everybody from top to bottom. Grant has already said it. Everybody from top to bottom. Did you see? Listen. Did, did you did you all not just see Mark Williams saying that this nigga is on the this nigga's work is trying to rehab his back? Jack Peterson walked into the room and said, I'm giving you some shit to do, boy. And I want you to come back and tell me. These centers, we playing Sacramento tonight. Tell me about Sabonis right quick. I think if you was out there, what would you be doing? Talk to me about it. What? Come on now. You think Mark, you think you think you think Jeff Peterson is only doing that with Mark Williams? Mark Williams is only publicly talked about. You think Brandon is not in that. You think that LaMelo is not in that. You think Miles and then Grant Williams are not being said, not being told the same thing. Come on now. Come on now. Chill. Look at my dog. Ah, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Biz, because I, I, I don't like, I don't, I, the, the narrative, I know where it comes from, and it's unfortunate. You know, it's unfortunate that the, the, the narrative around LaMelo Ball is one of a happy-go-lucky, spoiled little Richie Rich from Chino who already got everything he want in life. Therefore, the hunger to play basketball is not there because the people who play basketball are hungry to play because they don't have shit. Therefore, basketball means more to them than the game. It means that they have to live and play this game so their mama can live in a mansion. So they can live a certain lifestyle. And since LaMelo has that lifestyle already, then what will make him hungry if he already got the Lamborghini before he came into the NBA? Now, he, he's not pushed. The stimuli to push to push the hood, to push poor people into the NBA, to keep them hungry, that don't exist for LaMelo. So since, and since that don't exist, what stimulates LaMelo to do it? It cannot, it cannot, it cannot be that maybe he want to do it for the glory of the game itself without the burden of finances. Without, without the damn stimuli of someone who, who, who's trying to get their mama, trying to retire their mother. The hunger of him, I talk about it, and go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. The NFT account on Twitter knows him. He's, the NFT account on Twitter knows him. She's consistently exposing him for not working out. I don't give a fuck what a bitch say. What? With the, you know, with respect to the sisters in here, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sisters, y'all know, y'all know. I don't like those accounts. I don't like any of them. That's why I don't fuck with the NFT account. And that's why I don't fuck with her account. NFTs and the Mariah Mills of the world. Fuck them hoes. Fuck them all. Bitch, find something else to talk about. Without LaMelo, you wouldn't have shit to talk about on Twitter. God damn it. Get out of here. Nah, I don't give a fuck about that account. Don't even bring her name up in this room. I've seen how she, I've seen the moves that she's made and everything. Huh? She's telling the truth. We all know it's true, but we don't want to accept that he doesn't care. Watch him so long. That's serious. You're right. Melo came in a fucked up organization with a subpar approach. He did. Don't even tell me that the damn Michael Jordan, the Michael, the, the, the Borrego and all that stuff, all of a sudden, all that stuff, just the man just dropped in and they, he didn't have a, a Borrego as a coach. He didn't have Jordan as, a, as an owner who they just now, while the rest of his contemporaries were being built around, he was being put to the back of Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier, along with clout chasing motherfuckers all around him. What is the NFT account and others who claim to have his phone numbers, access to Jermaine Jackson and all that stuff? That's the problem. All them niggas should be cut off. Cut them all off. Cut them off. That's a groupie. Yeah, she's a goddamn groupie. That's why I said, fuck that hoe. She's not on the level, she's not on the level of a woman to me. Not no none, none like that. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about no elite woman, the divine feminine. I'm not talking about those sisters. But them, fuck them all. They're not even, they're not, they shouldn't be passed by. They should be left to rot on the street. Not even, not even, not in a casual. 
You don't even lay, you don't even lay around with nothing like that. You don't give her no attention. You make her go and get a job at McDonald's. Anyway, let me uh, let me get off my let me get off that. I don't want to hear nothing about no damn yeah. hey HP sauce. I apologize. You know I don't want to hear nothing about. I don't want to hear about no. I want I want to hear kiss and tell from some bitch. No, no, that's not what this is. Let's go to the next one, man. <laughs> right quick. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let me see. What's the next interview? We're gonna go to we're gonna go to um Miles Bridges. Brother Miles. We're gonna head to Miles Bridges right now. Uh, I just, I just give um all the glory to God for, you know, me being able to come back, me being able to stay healthy this whole season. Um, it was great being back with my team, uh, being back in the city of Charlotte. Uh, and I'm just, you know, grateful, grateful to be able to play play like I did. What do you think you proved this year? I can still play basketball. You know, not too many people could leave for a year and then come back and will average the same, damn near the same numbers that they did. Um, obviously, it's, it's a lot of things that I can improve in, improve on, um, and that's what the summer's for. So I'm gonna use this summer to improve on everything else. Be very vocal about your desire to stay here long term. How does that not translate to free? Yeah, I mean it's still the same. I, I would, I would still, I would love to be here. That's my plan to be here. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I love the city of Charlotte. I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Just about that, um, why do you want to be here beyond next season? And what would have to change in your mind for you not to come back? Uh, I mean, you know, you know, the NBA is a business. Um, but the reason why I want to be here is just. I, I damn, I grew up here. I, I, I've been here since I was 20. I'm 26 now. Uh, you know, been through a lot here. You know, the Hornets stayed down with me. They didn't have to, um, and they did. Um, it's just like a family to me here. You know, I'm, I'm used to it. My, my, my mom loves it here. My family loves it here. Um, so it's just home to me. Uh, Cliff had mentioned you being very coachable, along with a couple other guys. Uh, you hear something like that? Uh, that just gives a testament to all the coaches I had in my my childhood, my college days. Um, they always just told me just to listen. As long as I listen, I'll get better. Um, so I just use that with every coach that I have. Um, and it's helped me. You know, Cliff helped me a lot, uh, especially on the defensive end. He he helped me um, with a few techniques that I didn't know, um, and just. Offensive player, just being a three-level player, he helped me with that. Then you obviously know Melo as well as anybody on the team pretty much, man. Just knowing him now, you know, he was in the season, missing the things he has. Just what about his desire to come back and be a player that's not, you know, as an injury point, I guess, player? Yeah, I mean, Melo loves the game of basketball. Um, he – he wouldn't want for anything but to play. You know, he told me, he, he said next year, I want to play 75 plus, 76 plus. Um, so, Melo for sure wants to be on the court. And that's what people think, like, he doesn't want to be on the court. Uh, he just wants to wear his jewelry on the sideline. But nah, he, he wants to be on the court and he wants to win. You know, he knows how important he is to, to his organization. And it's going to be a big summer for him. When you mentioned the Warriors basketball, there's a lot of people. First that comes to mind, you should use Melo and Miles with the basketball. Uh, it's gonna be great, you know. I know he's gonna be in the gym. He's gonna be getting better, and, and so am I. And I'm, I'm excited for what 
for what Brandon's going to bring to his organization. You know, the sky's the limit for him. He's, he's done a great job. But he averaged 17 this year as a rookie. He showed that he could play with the best and be as poised as he as he was. It's, it's very impressive. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for Brandon. And then Steve mentioned how you kind of this team's iron man playing all the games you could. How excited are you and kind of the lead to, to get to the offseason? And how are you feeling? Like I said, I, I feel blessed. I give all the glory to God. Um, and, and my training staff, you know, they, they did a great job with me this year. Um, my weight coaches, just making sure to prevent injury. Um, so I'm just going to take those things into into the summer and just get better at that. Miles, congrats on a great season. You put up a lot of statistical career highs. Um, in terms of the numbers that look like you shot, uh, what were percentage of your shots at the rim this year compared to past seasons? How much of that was by design? Uh, you know, I was just working on – on different things, you know, trying to be a three-level scorer. You know, when I first got into the NBA, I was just known as a dunker. Um, and then, what, well, year three came around, and I started getting better at just getting to the rim and making threes and making plays off the dribble. Um, year four, y'all know how that went. And then this year, I just wanted to be able to get better at everything. But, you know, next year, I want to come in with, with more athleticism. I, I feel like just my, my year being off kind of – had my legs shot a little bit, and plus I plus I led the league in, in minutes played. So um, next year I don't feel like I'll have to do that, you know, given if we don't have any injuries. But yeah, I, I for sure I want to be at the rim dunking too. Yeah, I'm not, y'all not the only ones that want to see that, you know. If you could inject one on four attributes to this team to make it better, what would it be? I feel like just my consistency on the defensive end. You know, I feel like I always could get better at that. Um, specifically off the ball, you know, sometimes I fall asleep on defense, and that's that's something that my team needs me to do for for us to be successful and be a playoff team. So I got I got to get better at defense. What's one thing that's gonna? I guess you're gonna miss with Coach Coach Flip stepping down here. Like, what's the last thing that he said when you were the rest of the guy? Uh, he kind of reminds me of Coach Is in a way, um, just how just how hard on us he is. You know, he, he expects greatness from us. You know, any little mistake, he'll snap on it. Um, and that kind of reminds me of Coach is. And plus, he's he's a great guy. You know, he, he genuinely cares about his players. You see Kimba Walker in the tribute video, Marv, they're all talking about him. And when you see his former players, they always showing them love. So, yeah, Cl- Cliff, he's a good guy. But he's still going to be around, so I'm, I'm happy to be around him. And obviously, the hope is that you are back there next year pretty soon. Just where do you think you fit in? Obviously, the fellow should be helping. Mm-hmm. going to be rolling just – what do you think your role will be when everybody's rolling and ready just to go up the Uh, Just do whatever the team needs me to do. You know, need me to defend, need me to score, need me to rebound. Just be an all-around player, you know. I know Melo and Brandon, they're the vocal points of the team. So, for me, just to assist them um, and have it all come together just so we can make the playoffs. You asked Steve about these bright spots this season. For you, passing by Rice in some categories, how important is it? What, how much does it mean to you to – uh, it's definitely important to me. You know, I was I was here when Kemba became the all-time leading scorer, um, and that's something that I I want to achieve one day. You know, God willing. Um, but Pat, passing Glenn Rice was probably my favorite of the year. I I seen him at at one of the games, um, and it was just good seeing somebody from the same city as you. You know, as, as successful as he was, as for me to pass him, is just mind-boggling. So. Um, yeah, that that probably was my favorite one this year. How important is it for you to just finish your career? I know you want to be here long term now, but is this somewhere you just want to, you know, settle down completely and just play your entire career? Yeah, here. I mean, you you don't see too many people finishing their careers off. You know, Steph, he's he's been that that kind of model player uh, for this generation. You know, a lot of people be moving teams and moving around. And I, I don't want to do that. You know, I kind of want to be like Steph and Kobe and Dirk and, and that type of way. Just staying with a team, you know, and winning with a team. It seems like Grant was a big addition on him. He was in the locker room, too. Just, he talked about the passion. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to realize how much passion is there's with this team. What have you seen in the locker room that you've been able to uh, Just a leadership bro. You know, he had a conversation with uh, me, Mark, Melo, Brandon, uh, about staying on us in the summer. Um, and, and we haven't had that, you know. Terry Terry did that a little bit, um, but I feel like Grant, 
he 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 brought a big leadership role to this team. Um and a winning perspective, you know, he played in the finals. Did he play in the finals? He played in the finals. Yeah, he played he played in the finals. Uh he played on the Mavericks. They had a pretty good team. Um so yeah, just bringing that winning attitude. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. <clears throat> hey now. Yeah, Kemba's record is Kemba's on the clock. Did y'all hear what Miles Bridges said? Now I've been talking about this for a while. At Jams. You know I've been talking about this for a while. Let me see what we got. Two yeah, we 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 gonna get two more and then we're gonna shut it down, okay? But we gotta get two more out. Everybody hang with me. Let me see. Oh shit, that's 23 in the chat. Y'all ain't going nowhere. Okay, shit. Y'all hanging with the boy. Okay. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me check. Let's do a like check right quick. Let's do a like check. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? 20 likes. I like this. 23, 20. Yay. Hey, hey, hey. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate everybody. Did y'all hear what he said? Number one, like Ann Jam said, Miles accepted criticism from teammates that he at times went to sleep on defense. Not Luca. This is what I'm talking about. So he's going to look to work on his defense. But this is the thing. Do y'all remember, remember the talk two years ago before Miles got into his domestic, what the talk was about Miles Bridges two years ago? Airbnb, him and LaMelo Ball. Do y'all remember that the talk was that Miles Bridges was the best or the second best player on the Hornets two years ago? Do you all remember that talk? Or shall I remind everybody? Huh? Miles, what? Dex, Jeff is building his name and needs the metal ball to spell it out. You're damn right. Miles Bridges just said on that goddamn interview that the focal point of the Hornets is the metal ball and Brandon Miller. Now, Brandon is carrying it, carrying it like, yeah. Miles has taken a step back and he says he will do what is necessary for the team to win. Scoring, rebounding. That's why he's focusing on his defense and his three-level scoring. It's going to run through the middle of the, on the outside. Miles Bridges now has taken on the role of locker room guy. Then another thing, Grant Williams has told Miles, LaMelo, Brandon and Mark, I'm going to be on y'all on this side. Woo! Woo! Not like, not, not, not like Terry Rose in the videos or RTBMB, baby! No! 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 He ain't going to make sure they put the work in. So let me tell you something. <laughs> If the Mellow Ball is playing with children this summer, Grant would be in the gym with him. Grant be right there in the gym with him. Yeah, what you doing? Yeah, no, no, we going to play. LaMelo ain't going to get, LaMelo's not going to be able to get away with playing with children this summer. Just children. No, 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 no. And his camps? Oh, Grant will be there. <laughs> I love it. I love it because the veteran leadership, in order to go where they want to go, you need to have that type of thing. So you can you have a situation now where Miles is talking about being a Hornet for life. Like I said, hey, check the receipts. They're already here. They're already there. I said, I said early on, I said, Miles Bridges, if he played his cards right, he could fool around and be a Hornet for life. I said that early on. Oh, I'm going to find the receipt. I'm going to post it. I remember saying that. I remember saying that on one of my Miles Bridges streams. Early on, the Flint Phoenix streams when I was doing. Huh? Miles' family, Dan Sharp. What? HP. Oh, y'all, I, I see that y'all gave HP soft timeout. Is he able to come back? I don't want him to be out completely, you know, but, you know, we ain't going to, you know, but I do agree. We ain't going to be talking about no damn, you know, no goofy ass, no goofies. But here, nobody who claimed they got access and they know all this stuff on the inside. Miles Bridges just said, just did y'all just hear Miles Bridges just say that LaMelo Ball, the word is that he just want to sit around with his jury, but he really want to play. Did y'all not just hear him say that? He just said it. 
And Miles has accepted that this team, as far as the faces of the Hornets, will be LaMelo and Brandon. And in the locker room, the leader is Grant. Interesting. Very. It, 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 it's a. Uh, hmm. I have a, I have a great deal of respect for Miles Bridges. For him to for him to go from where he was to be where he is now, and yet be able to embrace it and still want to help them win. Others will others don't even have that type of fortitude that he just had to say what he just said. I fuck with you, Miles. I fuck with you. I fuck with you. No one else can handle. No one else will be able to handle what Miles just handled right then. They will be asking to be about it. They will be asking to go. Huh? Anyway, Jeff is in the building. His name, he needs the mail. Yeah, you got to. Look, everything is riding on the mail, man. Shit. <laughs> That's why Grant Williams is going to be on the end of the summer. So, hey, hey, LaVar. LaVar Ball, baby. If LaMelo's up there at the BBB mansion, Grant is going to be somewhere close by. <laughs> Grant Williams is going to be somewhere close by the BBB mansion. Trust me. <laughs> Ah, oh shit! You know, I love it. All right, we're gonna get these last two done, and then we're gonna call it. All right, because I want to keep everybody too long, but I want to get these done now. I want to do no part two. We're gonna get it all done today. Let me see. Next is Grant Williams, and then Lamelo Ball. All right. So let me do this again. Let me cut this in. Put this. Yeah, um, it's exciting, you know. It gives me a level of confidence going into the next season, you know, with the ability that we have and the teams that the team that we have. You know, it's just a matter of continuing to grow in our discipline and, and really, like, our talent's not the, the issue. It's just a matter of now. It's just a matter of coming in next year and being ready to perform. Um, understanding what it takes to win every game, um, understanding how difficult it is, especially um, at this level, you know. Winning is hard, and you have to – find a way to love that and enjoy it so um bringing these guys together even just playing for a hometown team and it's a special thing to do and hopefully you know we can make this this group and this team um competitive to a point that i i can talk trash to my the friends that i grew up with and say that you know we were part of that hornets team that made this hornets franchise consistently dominant Yeah, um, it's a it's a cool thing to have that opportunity. Um, I always say, you know, when uh, you're given the ball, you have to make the right decision. And there are some times where you have the matchup where you can go aggressive yourself, and there's other times where you saw where I catch it and I just be able to play make. And um, something that I enjoy doing because I've always been a person that loves playmaking more than anything else. Um, and I was able to do that under Cliff, and I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, we'll see how this upcoming season goes with the, as we get everybody healthy and what role and capacity I'll be in. But um, I always say whatever it takes to win, that's what we have to be committed to. And if I'm asked to do what I did at the end of the season, then I'll do that. If I'm asked to do something different, then I'll do that. So um, we all have to come in with that same mentality and approach of sacrificing for one another and making sure that we prioritize um, the winning column more than anything else. Green, you spent some time, obviously, with Jason Payton in Boston. You spent a little bit of time here with Brandon. Do you see any parallels in their games? And just kind of what trajectory do you feel like Brandon's on after just 
yeah, Brandon's going to be special. Um, he, he, I see more comparisons with the PG kind of comparison too, um, just because Jason's a, is his own kind of category because he's six ten and has those long arms and just different, like more fluid. But um, he, Brandon has the ability as he continues to grow in this league and understand um, where his spots are and how comfortable he can get to certain shots and what shots are good shots versus bad where he can really be one of those elite players, elite scorers in the league. And also the thing that I'll say with Brandon is as he continues to develop is his mentality is one of the best I've been around just in terms of um, he really wants to be successful and wants to be good. And he wants to not only do that for himself, but also for the team and win. Um, so he's going to have a special growth hopefully in this next upcoming year and hopefully in the next however many years to come. And, uh, really good team. Excuse me. Uh, I'll let Jeff be the GM, but talent-wise, I feel like we have the talent that's needed. Um, it's just a matter of the discipline and understanding what it takes to go and to win in the health side. You know, um, doing all it takes to prepare for games. You know, doing all it takes to keep your body in the best position it can be because it's difficult to 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 win if you don't have everyone available. And you see a lot of those teams that have success, like they're best players don't miss a lot of games the same way their um, role players don't miss a lot. When I was in Boston, I think I've seen, I've seen guys play through the worst of injuries. And, like, I remember – I'm not going to speak on what some of the guys', guys health because they may still be dealing with it. But, um, like, I've seen guys play through things that needed surgery. And, like, it's, it's something that – it's a mentality. And it's something that we will develop and, and commit to as we continue to grow together because all of us here, I think, are focused on the right things, especially the guys they kept after the trade deadline. It's just a matter of now uh, understanding that as we go into this upcoming season, um, we we focus on one another to be prepared. Um, coming into training camp at the best of our ability, coming in with a level of, of commitment to one another to say, like, yeah, even though this may be uncomfortable for me now, it may help us 30, 30 games, 50 games down the line. So um, I really do believe that the talent's not the issue in this group. Like, you remember, what was it, three or four years ago, same, same group, they were the fourth seed in the East. Um, then guys got hurt and they ended up being the 10th or 9th or whatever it was and lost in the plan. But it's not the talent I feel like is the issue. It's just a matter of making sure we're available and best avail ability is availability. And making sure that we prioritize um, that and some things are uncontrolled, but um, the things that we can, that's the number one thing. And then in terms of things that we can add, I feel like, you know, I haven't seen this team fully healthy yet, so it's hard for me to say. But I mean, we have the training camp with Lamelo and Brandon and uh, Miles hopefully being back and Mark, even Nick and Seth, Cody. Like, I feel like you have a team that can compete um, night in and night out. It's just a matter of – and then we whatever pick that we have, whether it's top ten, top – eight, top five, whoever type of pick we get, you know, we'll have we'll have talent. It's just a matter of being prepared. Uh, you mentioned availability. Uh, Coach had mentioned Miles uh, playing on almost every game pretty much this season. From your perspective, um, you mentioned also things. If you can have him be here long term, it's a good thing for the organization. Why do you think Miles is a good fit for you guys going beyond next year? What do you think this team has to think for the missing for the he brings a level of versatility to this team. You know, if a guy does miss a game, you know Miles is going to play and he can step up and provide the scoring and the ability to put the ball in the basket. He also has the defensive capability to guard multiple different positions. Um, when we have that full lineup and group, I think it's like six, Lamelo six five, whatever, however tall he is, six seven, Brandon six six, Miles six six, Grant six six, and then Mark seven foot. And that's a lineup that can either switch and also be a, a team that it's really physical because of the group that it is. And um, the thing about Miles is, you know, he has a voice here. Um, he's been here for a long time, and he's worked his tail off to hopefully get the contract that he gets this summer. So now it's just a matter of understanding the level of preparedness and maturity that it takes to win. And I think that Miles can bring that, and I think that his level of leadership can really um, continue to grow as it has throughout the rest of the season. And I think that um, with Miles, one of the cool things about him is that he connects with guys on a deeper level, not just from a player-to-player a -player perspective, but I think that he's done a good job of throughout the organization of talking to people. Um, so um, his ability is there. The talent is there. Um, now it's just a matter of bringing it all together because, like you said, availability is huge, and Miles doesn't miss games no matter what he's going through, and I really, we really appreciate that about him and something that I think could be an identity of our team as we continue to follow his lead. 
then with Melo, you haven't obviously played in the fourth him um, just yet, but just wondering behind the scenes um, what you've seen from him and just how much do you think he's ready to kind of come back next year and you know, get at it? Yeah, um, I feel like the thing about LaMelo is, like, he's actually more mature than people think, um, especially ac- or throughout the rest of the league. Like, it's funny, outside looking in, I said this before I got here, or somebody, I forget who I was talking to, but um, you would have thought, like, he was this immature, like, brash guy, but, like, his maturity level is there. Um, now it's just a matter of, you know, understanding what, what it takes because he hasn't had those, like, he's had some good vets, but he hasn't had, you know, the ones who teach him everything. And I think that's something that I think this group provides with, D, with Seth, DB, myself, and being able to communicate with him on a higher and deeper level while also understanding we want his best interests at heart because he's our best. He's going to be the best player for this team. And in order for us, our team to be great, you know, we need him to be great. We need him to be available. We need him to be um, a guy that we can um, follow and guys can commit and lead and follow behind. So um, the talent is there. You know, I've practiced with them and seen, like, the ability. It's not a question of his ability. It's just a matter of, you know, doing all the things that matter and, and it takes to win and it takes to really be on the court and out there with the guys. Um, I think that, you know, the guys that are here, especially the ones that are staying around with, whether it's myself, Brandon, Miles, um, we're going to expect the most out of them and we're going to challenge them. And I think that's something that um, he'll, he'll receive well. And I think that as you see this upcoming year, he'll be prepared to really – take that level of growth that you guys have been hoping for and receive. And um, I think he's played, what, 30-some games over. I think that number will change. Brent, I want to apologize if you've asked this about before, but I want to ask you about kind of your pregame or shoot-around routine because you do something that appears very intentional where you dap up everybody within a, a range of the floor. How much of that is an intentional act? Is that something that you've always done, or is that something new you brought to Charlotte? Yeah, I started that, I think, last year um, because I I, I always do an organizational gift um, at Christmas um, just because I always understand that, like, as much as people give credit to the basketball players and the team, um, it's not just us who make the make the Hornets or the Mavericks or the Celtics what they are and I always want to like show my appreciation and to the arena staff too same same thing like I I did it started last year because I realized like sometimes doing that can change someone's whole day or perspective or or light, like bring light to their day you know whether it's a kid whether it's somebody that's worked worked for 12 hours been on their feet for 12 hours and don't really have many interactions with players you know um try my best to like put a smile on someone else's face and that's kind of how I started it um and I try to keep it consistent because I understand that although um you know things are rough in someone's life you know one little light could change their entire week and you mentioned how much it means to you to be with this organization and maybe kind of show some of your friends the way that uh, this organization can play or you can find what it is how much do you not to go all MJ me on you but you take it personally that you know, sometimes you look up and you see jerseys from other organizations that are here. How much do you want to try to change that and take that personally? Yeah, that's a that's like number one goal for me. Um, because I remember, like, I wasn't a, I wasn't a basketball fan back then, but I remember when Muxie and those guys were 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 around and um, the level of Charlotte fans that they were. And right now, it's, we have Charlotte fans a lot, but we also have the guys who turn the Celtics game into a home game for the Celtics, and that's something that. I want to take pride in, in saying that that changed um, because this this arena, this team can be really, really, really good and can be one of the best markets in the league. And that's our job to put a good product on the court so that doesn't happen. You know, um, as players, we have to take pride in that and say that no other team will make a home game in our, our arena because um, that's something that they should come into our arena thinking, well, dang, it's hard to play here rather than, oh, well, you know, we can – goof off mess around and still get a win like that's something that I think we have to take pride in and develop because um night in night out you know these guys we, we're gonna put the work in now it's just a matter of um putting the product on the floor to show that success and I grew up in the era with the Bobcats I grew up in the era with um bring back the buzz and I remember talking to one of my good friends Jonathan Hoppy and him saying that the Hornets can be special and those words kind of stuck in my mind, my mind, and especially once I got traded here. The goal is to be special. Thank you. All right. And um, we're going to go to the LaMelo interview in just a moment, right quick. This is the last one is LaMelo's interview. You know, um, 
<laughs> Grant Williams, Dallas fucked up. You know, you have a glue guy there. Grant and Miles. You notice he's talking Miles up. It's like Grant is making sure that Miles always feels like he has room there. Even though he has ceded to LaMelo and Brandon, Grant is saying, no, baby, you still, your voice, you. The sense of importance and what you mean to this team is still necessary. So, hey, Grant, let the cat out the bag as far as what the starting five will be next year, y'all. It's going to be LaMelo, Brandon, Miles, Grant, and Mark. That's going to be the starting five next year. You know, Grant is not talking like he's worried about being put in the package. And I think they, behind the scenes, I think they're rallying for Miles to come back. I think the players want Miles to come back. And I think Jeff Peterson may uh, take that consideration. As long as Rich Paul doesn't overreach, I think the Miles will be back in a Hornets uniform. And that, I think the foundational stone for the Hornets going forward will be LaMelo, Brandon, Miles, Grant, and Mark, along with their high pick that they don't have to necessarily throw him into the fire. They can bring him along, along with, you know, uh, key bench pieces and everything, right? Wait a minute. R.O. <laughs> Basically, he just called Haywood and Rosier useless. This is what I'm saying. Rosier didn't take, well, uh, Gordon Haywood didn't, didn't, didn't pull the metal ball up on his wing to teach him anything. Bismack wasn't even, Bismack was gone. Who did LaMelo have to lean on? Who did he have to lean on? Terry Rozier with the cups? Uh, you know what? I ain't going to do that. You know, who did he have to lean on? Miles even said what Terry did a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Grant is a different thing. A different animal. Because he's been to the finals. He's been to the finals. It's a different animal. And I think LaMelo's going to, he said that we are going to push LaMelo. Why? Because, not because we think he's lazy. Like I said earlier, because without you, the Melo, we ain't going nowhere. He said he's the best player on the team. If this is LaMelo Ball's team, baby, his Robin and co-host is Brandon Miller. This team will only go as far as LaMelo Ball take them. So all the other, that's why I'm hoping that this summer, LaMelo Ball, Ranchers firm, I said, Melo has the talent but doesn't put the work in off the court. The reason has progressed. The way he should. No, he didn't confirm anything. He didn't confirm what you said. Nowhere in that interview did he say that that, that LaMelo Ball is lazy and uncommitted. He said that LaMelo Ball hasn't had no good leaders around him. That's what he just said. Right? And now he does. You know? The talent is there. Right? So now it's about having people, good people around him. You know, bad losing cultures start with the vets, bro. If the vets ain't shit, then the team ain't going to be shit. You need good vets there. All the great players talk about their vets that helped them when they came into this league. All of them do. All of them. They all talk about their good vets. You know? So now LaMelo has a good group of vets around him that are going to push him the way they're supposed to. There's nothing wrong with pushing LaMelo. There's nothing wrong with pushing him at all. He needs to be pushed. Not because he don't have what it takes. You think Anthony Edwards is not being pushed? Of course he's being pushed. You know, the only one that, the only, the only public, the only person that has an issue being pushed is Luca. Everybody else is being pushed. Pablo and them, they not, they, they, Jamal Mosley is pushing the boys down there. What? And you know Tibbs is pushing Boston? Stop. You know? Yeah, you're reaching. You know? LaMelo has good people around him who actually, like Grant said, who actually give a fuck that he's successful and not busy trying to collect a damn lit off of Michael Jordan as they get up, up, up out of here, a la Gordon Haywood. Leaving the team, saying, oh, it's a losing culture. A Gordon Haywood, a, a damn Terry Rozier down the damn... Um, down in Miami talking about how it's a losing culture in the DNA when you the vet. The then the, the damn the losing culture in Charlotte DNA terrorists just said losing was in the DNA of the Charlotte Hornets. And I'm saying, nigga, I'm saying, boy, you the one brought in to replace Kimba to keep the good times rolling, and then you leave and shit on the very mess you made. Get the fuck out of here. 
vet, the uh, grant, uh, Lamelo got people around him who believe in him. Finally, that's why they pushing him. They believe in him. The only question, the only last question for another answer is: Do you believe in yourself, boy? Luke Skywalker, Obi Wan, Luke, Luke Skywalker finally has a bunch of Obi Wans around him now. Anyway, let's go to Lamelo's interview so we can get up out of here. <laughs> you know, because I'm gonna hold everybody, but I'm glad everybody's hung around. Oh, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I am grateful. You know, HP, come back, but we're not gonna agree on that. <laughs> we're not. We're not, I'm not going to, because I don't see it that way. You know, I don't see it that way. You know, but we can agree on something else. So I'm not saying don't come back. I'm just saying on this, I don't, I, I, I don't think so. Not on this. So we can go to the metal ball. He's the last of it. And then we up out of here. All right. I'm sure this was uh, obviously a disappointing season for you personally and not how you wanted to play out. Uh, especially the last year, just overall, how are you feeling right now? How's the ankle feeling? Just what were your what's mindset at the moment? Uh, yeah, definitely a season we didn't want to have, but uh, ankle's been feeling better. And then first time getting like a full off season, so kind of happy about that. Is that encouraging? I think um, a lot of the guys that were, you know, dealing with injuries right now said it's, it feels good and it's the off season. Is that you do some some you're right. Yeah, definitely. That's fact. When did you feel like it was at a point where you just couldn't come back? Uh, pretty much the the game I went out, it was hurting, and then as time went on, it just it wasn't feeling like NBA ready for like a game. You know what I'm saying? I know we saw you work out a little bit. Did you get to a point where you felt like you were okay, or was it a situation where it was just like you were trying to see how much you could get to? Uh, yeah, pretty much just seeing how much I can get to and just seeing how it'll go. So, yeah, pretty much just going out there and then still just trying to keep my shot and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Miles said that you told him you want to try to play 75-plus games next year. How do you get to that point? Uh, just listen to the trainers and everybody. So... Yeah, whatever the plan is, you know, and take it that. No, can you talk about Brandon Miller a little bit? One, three time reigning rookie of the month, um, and kind of what his trajectory could be for this team next season. Right. Yeah, B. Mill, great player, as y'all all seen. you seen what he could do. So, you know, he has a big role and then a big summer for him, too. Miles had mentioned your passion for playing basketball. I mean, people on the outside may not think that, you know, it's there. Can you explain just, I guess, Oh yeah, my favorite thing to do is play basketball. So just not being able to do it is obviously horrible. So the fact that I got this summer though, I'm just gonna take the summer, you know, try to get as strong as I could, and so I'm out there and can play. And then when you, um, I guess, how are you feeling right now, just compared to where you were right. when you went out? And you mentioned the whole summer to be able to, to play basketball. How would that help you going to? I feel like we've been going the right way. You know, we already been working on everything on the ankle and stuff. So I've been, I've been feeling better. Can you talk about your relationship with Coach Cleveland and kind of how he's helped you in your time here in Charlotte? Oh yeah, Cliff, great person. I mean, on and off the court, just a great role model. Just, just a great dude to look up to for real. Is there any type of characteristics that you kind of go with this next coach? This next coach? Uh, I think the whole organization as a whole is just we're moving in the right way, so I just feel they're gonna make the right move or whatever. Is your offseason measurement gonna include something from an ankle strengthening standpoint to kind of at least protect you? From uh, everything, you know, the whole body, just from ground up. Do you think you will wear ankle braces? Or are you still we're gonna gonna see see over summer, try some stuff, see what it is, and go from there. It's more like you, I guess, custom stuff that make you feel. Whatever feel good, go from there. Yes, so. 
With Lonzo, obviously, trying to get back to the NBA, too, is that something you guys are going to get to, like, attack rehab to summon together, or is it more like a part there? Uh, I think he played for a different team, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have calls here and there, but he, he got his training people and then I got my people. Has there been any advice that he's given you to try to just get back right and, you know, get back healthy? Uh, I mean, yeah, little stuff here and there, but, yeah, I mean, we just be chatting about other stuff for real. You know, when you think about, you know, maybe you get back on the court, mm -hmm. and, you know, some of these other guys back on the court, Mark. And, right. Uh, what do you feel like future-wise? Uh, I already feel like we have a great team. I just feel like we need to be avail available to play. So, yeah, on the court, I feel like as soon as we can play, we'll be good. Appreciate that. <laughs> Ooh, they hate his ass. God damn it, LaMelo, give us something. <laughs> I love it. I love the fact that LaMelo don't give them shit. <laughs> They can go to Brandon for they can go to Brandon for all the and they can go to Brandon for for they can go to Brandon for the for the other for all the little narrative questions and stuff. And Brandon will, Brandon will give them that. Lamelo don't do that. He ain't got time for it. Lamelo it, 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 it's like <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, I tell you though, if he's tired of the ankle questions, you can tell, you know, it's like, you know, let's stop talking about that. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me see. All he does in the summer is train with his and no, come on now. He he tra he trains. He runs. He always he always trains with his with his AAU team, his children. There's nothing wrong with that. I wanted to. I've always said I wanted the metal to do other runs, you know, like some of the other players do. But you know, a lot of times that shit is just political. It's just to show your face. It's it's NBA politics, and the metal ain't political like that. He don't come off as political like that. Why well, I don't show up with just a phony ass niggas, man? That I'm, I don't really fuck with. You know, let me train with my people. I got your man. I got my people. I can train with them. You know, and he got Grant Williams. You know, he got Miles. He got his people. He got his teammates. He's like Giannis. Giannis they ain't running around, run around in these rounds. Giannis goes and he goes into the lab and he comes back. Giannis is against stuff like going on runs and stuff like that. Giannis is against that. Giannis has never done it. He does not believe in that. Joker is. Do you see Nikola Jokic doing some of time runs with anybody? No, his ass is on a horse drinking beer in Serbia. The same with Luca. So stunk on the phone now. Let's not do that. Boom, boom, yo, Rod doing this a peak. You know, Rod, I've been I've been irritated I've been irritated with Rod the whole all the interviews. It's Rod. I've been irritated the whole time with Rod and those silly questions he be asking. He be trying to ask those got you questions and everything. And it's like, why are you asking these questions, man? No one else is asking these silly questions but you. And then you wonder why the players are short with you, especially Melo. Melo don't fuck with Rob Boom at all. Rob Boom fucked up from his first from the first day with the Melo ball, right? Come on now, you know. You see what I'm saying? This is the other issue. Jermaine isn't a pro NBA trainer. Melo never made progress with him training. Oh, you know, no, no, don't say nothing about his people. Jermaine has made it. Jermaine Jackson made it where he's in the NBA. Stop that. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. HP. Let me not let me not find out. Let me let me not find out you a burner HP up in here. Cause I I recognize those talking points. I know where they come from. I know exactly where they come from. HP. Are you over there? Are you over there sipping on ball facts Kool-Aid? <laughs> Cause that's that's some stuff I hear from the extremes of the ball verse over there. I hear that from them. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's what it is. You know? <laughs> Oh, that they 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 that faction always has things to say about Jermaine and everything over there at that corner of the ball verse, you know. But that's not this. That's not what this is, you know. I'm on the other side. I'm I'm, I'm on the other, I'm on a different part of the ball verse over this way. So no, this that this ain't this ain't this ain't that HP. Okay, <laughs> hey, it's not. It is what it is, you know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, what? Well, come on, now, Arlo, you don't know what he's talking about. He's sipping some Kool Aid from somewhere, and he's bringing that. He's bringing those talking points over here, you know. And it's like I, I, I know where those talking points have come from. I know I've heard them before on several channels in the ball verse, and it ain't gonna happen. Not, not over here. Not on this part of the ball verse. No, this is different. This is a different part of the ball. This is a different room in the, in the mansion of the ball verse, baby. 
<laughs> well, the man, the mellow was in and out. You know, the mellow is not gonna give no long, juicy asses decks, long answers, so you can so you can create a whole narrative from him. The mellow, the mellow, one thing I like that the mellow did from day one, which is why they hated him. The mellow gave those answers, been giving those answers for four years and will continue. You know, the if you want to get like some like some answers, answers from the mellow, you need to get Jalen. You need to get Jalen Rose to interview. Jalen Rose, you need to come and interview him. The, the, the last time the mellow, or you get a, or you get Ashley. If Ashley interviews the mellow, he likes up with Ashley interviews. You get Ashley up in there. Oh yeah, the mellow light up. The mellow will give more with Ashley because he like Ashley. <laughs> Ashley is his type. <laughs> Rob Boone is not his type. <laughs> anyway. I think it's going to be a good summer for the Hornets, man. You know, I think it's going to be a good summer for the Hornets. I think we'll discuss that probably on another live stream because I'm about to shut it down. It's almost here. This is a drought stream. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to let the stream run any longer. You know, um, LaMelo Ball does care. LaMelo Ball is not going to come out. And Rob Boone did say, well, what do you say to people who say you don't care? He said, it's he said, I like that. I like to play basketball. It's horrible and I don't play. Now, that's not the juicy answer that people want. I don't want to die on the court. I just, I just been. Hey. Lamelo's not gonna give you that. He's not gonna give you the damn soap opera answer. He's just not gonna do it. He'll say, I, "All I know is to play basketball and it's horrible and not playing." Now I know that doesn't stimulate your. That doesn't stimulate a lot of people's. You know, because it's not that soap opera. Oh, that drama filled, that damn reality show answer. It's horrible that I'm not playing, but I'm working on myself from head to toe, so I can be ready next season. I already told Miles what I'm going to do. And that's all. And that's it. That's all. That's, that's Rob Boone's ridiculous questions about Lonzo and Mello wanting to end the interview. Reminded me when Cam Newton got tired with the stupid question from the. Yeah, he did. What the fuck are you asking about? That's why he said. That's why Lamelo said. Why, what are you talking about my brother for? Lonzo's a whole other team. Well, does he talk to you? If he did, why? I'm not going to tell you. The fuck? What about me and my brother talk about what you mean, my brother? LeBar, learn from your son. Shit. God damn it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you know, raggedy shoes and all that stuff, man. Stop. Come on now. No, if he doesn't play next year. See, see, this is the HP. Why are you speaking? See, that's another thing. If he doesn't play, I'm Gary, if he doesn't play next year, his career is cooked. I hope he puts the work in. Speak life into it then, HP. Don't speak like you want him to fail. Don't speak like you're waiting for him to fail. Speak life into it. Words, our thoughts and words are powerful, man. The energy we put out there is powerful, man. Speak life into it. If you want him to be successful, speak success. Speak success. This ain't spooky. It's real. Speak life, speak life into it then. The Hornets are gonna have an excellent offseason. They're gonna come back ready to deal next year. And they have taken names, they got a long shit list. We will have the shit list games will be back on next year. They will be. There'll be plenty of content, you know? And everything. What about the guy out of here? Jay, Ayo, the Hornets draft clean and gonna be pissed. The Cody Zeller, Frank Kaminsky. Yeah, I hope not. I think they I think. I think, Jay, I think, I have a feeling, I'm up out of here. If they go with LaMelo, Brandon Miller, Grant Williams, Miles Bridges, and Mark Williams, if they're going in that direction, then I expect them to get more players like that. Right? You see what I'm saying? You know, are you just being a pessimist now, HP? You don't know that. You know, that's what you say. So anyway, you know, and so now you are coming over here to spread that madness and negativity over here. And I'm not going to have that on this platform. Bro. We're not going to spread that negativity over here, HP. You can, if you want that, go somewhere else with that negativity, man. We're not speaking. We're not going, we're not going to say that Lamelo is not going to be successful over here. I'm going to speak that to nobody. Somebody said some foolishness about wishing that Brandon a few lives ago, somebody came on this damn platform talking shit about they want Brandon Miller to hurt himself so that LaMelo, so they won't be a threat to LaMelo Ball. I said, get his ass up out of here, man. We don't speak like that over here. 
I said, in fact, I said, in fact, the very injury that you hope for Brandon Miller, I am, I'm calling for it to happen to you. You know, HP, baby, I hope that whatever you're doing in life, I hope that you have a better attitude about what you're doing and what you're putting out here. I hope. I hope that what you're doing, you don't wake up thinking you're going to fail every day. I hope that you don't wake up like that. And I hope that's not what you're telling other people around your circle, that they won't be successful in shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that if you see people who you don't think putting the work in, I'm hoping that you're there to help them put the work in since you obviously are putting the work in. Anyway. Anyway, I'm up. Jay Jonah, that was the old Jordan regime looking for a tall, non talented Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Jeff is going to be, I think Jeff and them stuck on a different cloth. <laughs> I think they're going to, I think they're going to continue to get somebody to plug and play to keep the switchability and the defense set. I think they don't get a plug and play. If they don't get Alex Saar, then they're going to get one of those players, you know, a Castle. Believe it or not, I think Castle will be perfect to plug in to that team already because Castle has a skill set where he can play multiple positions on offense and defense. So then, you know what I'm saying? So they, they, it's, it's about, Clifford just said it, talent, balanced talent wins in this league now. It can't be top heavy anyway. It can't be. Miles already said, next year I'm not going to be playing all these minutes I played this year. You see what I'm saying? You know? We speak positively on this live stream about LaMelo and the rest of the horns. Yeah, we ain't going to be on that now. We shall see next season. Come back, HP. Come back. We'll talk about it next season. We'll see about it, HP. And if if if, if everything is true what you said, I'll give you flowers. Because I'm not like that. I say, HP, you're right. You know what I'm saying? But now, if he come back and do what I say he's going to do, HP, come back here and pay homage. Well, I borrowed that from flight. Pay homage now. Come back over here and say I was wrong. And we won't cook you too hard. All right? But I'm glad you came by. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you came by. We shall see, HP. We shall see. This has been the, um, this has been, uh, this is Chief Bartram. This has been the uh, BTW uh, Network. This is Tribe Sports Media. This is the Tribe Buzz stream. This will probably be the last one this year. Maybe the draft. And the new coach may be the only other two I do for the Tribe Buzz. Because everything is going to switch over to the Open Tribe and the Malice of the Melanated. Um, Angel Reese content, maybe. And NBA playoffs. We're going to we're gonna go live again tomorrow. We're going to talk about, we just before the games. We're going to talk about the brackets, the play-in. Who y'all got on the play-in games? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, come on to HP. It's all good. If not, start, we got to get Castle or Holland. Yeah. I don't I want to entertain what to say about Melo. Y'all sound stupid. <laughs> Castle or Holland, I think, would be good. Size. Size that can play the two, the three, the four. I think that's what they're looking for. That way you kind of, that's why, that may save JT Thor. May save him. For sure, Poku. You know, so there's a lot of moving parts in Charlotte for us to look forward to, man. A lot of different things that have happened. What they gonna do with Poku? Where's if they gonna keep Vasa? Trey Man, you know Nick is looking pretty good. They are gonna continue to develop Nick, you know. So there's they, things are looking pretty good for Charlotte, despite despite the season that the Hornets have had, the foundation that they have set is gonna put the Hornets on the other side of a lot of shit next year. And there's gonna be Pete and the Hornets will no longer be laughed at, no longer be seen as an easy game, you know. So that's what I see. That's what I see. Be sure, um, if you either now on the replay game, be sure you like. Um, be sure you comment, either now on the replay game, you know, um, share this, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, and support the network, cash at Bartron9STW, paypal.me, Bartron9STW. Uh, this has been Chief Bartron, Bartronize the World. Everyone have a good night. I'm glad you all stayed through with me, man. I usually don't have streams this long, but. I'm glad you all stayed through, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Peace. Bartron. Bartronize the world. Yeah. Where you at? 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 And Africanism, watch them left their petty ass to the brink and take the cash with you. Pass that.
spiritual wolf and back to visually poor man's status pack at the rap addict the converse rugged and shogun show no spark to be rebuttal and regardless who played as garbage the line was before your time like stuck in the 80s but to see out of the north predict the tower was falling ponder this object of ridicule i am longer than shack shoes on the bio side of a revolution